scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, when he bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. As a man of God, your responsibility is not to be celebrated or to build an empire for yourself as a true minister of the gospel your primary responsibility is to be an extension of the power the life and the glory of God let's look at the scripture Jeremiah 23 verse 4 Jeremiah 23 Verse 4. It says, And I will set up shepherds over them who shall feed them, and they shall fear no more, nor be dismayed, neither shall they be lacking, saith the Lord. It says, And I will set up shepherds. over them and the primary assignment of those shepherds will be to feed them so that they no more fear they no longer are in dismay and that they neither be lacking saith the Lord and so when God anoints a man a minister of the gospel you are a servant to the people and your responsibility is to bring the fresh manna from heaven. Not just any revelation you read around, but fresh manna from heaven that is capable of building, changing, empowering the people. See, our ministration in the New Testament is that of the Spirit. Meaning, when you listen to a man who is ministering by the anointing, you are receiving more than information. Is that true? There is an activity. It's a transfer. This is the most powerful part of the ministration of the word. That while you are sitting right now listening to me, there is a spiritual transfer. Something is entering your spirit. Ezekiel chapter 2 from verse 1 and 2. It says, And the spirit entered me when he spake unto me and set me upon my feet. Let me tell you something. Without the ministration of the spirit, every other thing we are doing is just noise. It is the ability to convey spiritual realities. Not just the English. Not just the grammar. Are you getting my point now? But there is an impartation upon your spirit man. And that impartation is what engraces you to walk in the reality of what you are taught. Without the spirit backing the word, there is no supply of grace to become. It says, as many as believed in him, even to them that believed on his name, he gave them what? Power to become. Not power to hear. Power to become. Meaning that when the word of God is taught in truth, it should not only bless you in terms of making you feel good. It should activate something in your spirit and make you become it. 
Because the word of God is not a thing. The Greek word, word is logos, right? And Jesus, the word is called the living logos. He's a person. You can listen to my message, the living logos. Meaning, the ultimate desire of God is not for you to learn scripture. The ultimate desire is that through the instrumentality of scripture, light will enter you to become an epistle yourself. A written epistle, the apostle says. Hallelujah. So this is what we are here to do tonight. And I trust that the Lord will bless our hearts in the name of Jesus Christ. I'll share with us a few thoughts that the Lord put in my heart. And I trust that God will help us. Hallelujah. First John chapter 5. One of the most tragic things that has happened to the body of Christ, especially pastors, preachers, is that we have lost the spirit of the word. And I say this with a very heavy heart. There's so much of talking going on. Sunday after Sunday, talking. Listen, let me tell you the truth. I'm not against the theological understanding of the word. I'm not against the intellectual comprehension of the word. But if all we have to give people is just information, just rema in terms of new discoveries, we will never be able to produce a victorious army. Hallelujah. It doesn't take being spiritual to have information. It just takes being passionate. You don't have to be spiritual. You don't have to wait on God to get spiritual information. You see, the distinguishing factor, let me tell you something. Many people think it's just the new information that produces transformation in people's lives. Not necessarily. Not necessarily. There is a spirit that is behind scripture. One time the Lord opened my eyes. And when the Lord opened my eyes, I was in a vision and I saw a big, like an ancient door or a gate if I will call it. And when I looked closely, I found out that that gate was made of many smaller doors. Actually a door. Many smaller doors. Are you following me now? And on every one of those doors, a scripture was written. I saw the doors opening and closing. Meaning behind the letter, behind the grammar, behind the Greek and Hebrew and Aramaic, there is a spirit waiting to transform people. The assignment, the ministration of that spirit is the spirit of life. The spirit of life. Not just the spirit of truth. The spirit of life. He gives life to the information you are hearing. And then you are empowered to walk in its reality here and now. So there is a lot of church going on. There is a lot of conferences and activities and meetings. But what we have done primarily as the church of the Lord Jesus Christ is to reduce the ministration of the word to become an intellectual thing. So it's just about theological dissertations or Greek and Hebrew. Somehow we have convinced ourselves that the more we read Greek and Hebrew and express, you know, the words in Greek and Hebrew and bring new words, we think that the anointing is in the Greek or the anointing is in the Hebrew or the anointing is in the English or the communication. There is a spirit. There is a spirit. That's the reason why you can hear a very powerful message and not be changed. There is a spirit. Listen, as I'm talking to you right now, there is a spirit that is compelling what I'm saying to enter you so that you are persuaded. That's why you can bring somebody that is hardened, somebody that will even swear that I won't listen to God, I won't do anything. And when he sits down under this anointing, from the prayer to the worship, there is a spirit. There is a spirit. Are you getting what I'm saying now? It is that spirit that makes the person just keep quiet later on. And all of a sudden, you are seeing somebody that you know was stubborn. Probably even insulting the meeting. And yet he's silent. 
and then paying attention. Listen. I want to convince you that without the ministration of the spirit, everything we are doing in ministry is useless. Get this. Get this. Get this. There is a wrong wrong understanding about impact and transformation many people wonder why you go to certain christian circles and there is hardly any change for 10 years people can be in a church but there is no notable transformation the only thing is that they know the names of everybody and while it's good to teach people things like um you know accounting timekeeping other secular principles here and there there is nothing in life that will replace the ministration of the spirit not just being full of the holy ghost not just receiving the anointing the ministration of the spirit the participation that at every point in your dispensing of the word there is a light there is a life that's the only way your words can transform people let me tell you something I am always aware that it's a privilege for God's people to be gathered here week in, week out. Some persons have traveled from different states, different regions to be here. You cannot just come all the way to just come and listen to a, a presentation of Bible or just a religious Bible study. It's more than that. That is the reason why, let me tell you something. It's good to listen to tapes. It's good to read books but none of them can replace being in an atmosphere there is something about the atmosphere are you getting what i'm saying an atmosphere activates a lot of things there is something about you sitting down from the first time you come in and sit down even before the service starts proper there is already the ministration of, of the spirit going on convictions are changing ideologies are shifting death is being replaced by life the earthly is becoming the heavenly right that revelation listen let me tell you i've said it again and let me just use this opportunity to stress i absolutely believe that before jesus comes you see we've taught on the concept of immortality there's been a number of preachers who have brought that concept in the body of christ But what we have not taught people it is a scriptural concept the bible tells us death can be swallowed up in victory that the mortal can become the immortal that the natural the terrestrial can translate there is a provision in the kingdom that allows the natural to become divine are you getting what i'm saying now that divine dimension brothers and sisters is what we are called to demonstrate a believer must understand that there is nothing natural about you if you are not convinced about what i'm telling you you will never be able to do great things for the kingdom i know that here and there because of our humanity the attachment of this body somehow we tend to trivialize and we think that the activities of the kingdom must be done sensually and so we preach sensually we carry out all that we do sensually but there is a spirit there is a spirit that is the one factor that makes ministry different from business or makes ministry different from a, a seminar right that's the difference we have lost this spirit in crusades we have lost this spirit in conferences and you see that people sit down and they never leave with that transformation can I tell you something? The ministration of the spirit is not just about understanding a topic. It's about the presence of God changing you. Meaning, if we come here and all we do is to sing, you should still live transformed. Because you see, the, the concept of transformation is not just about hearing words alone. When you are sitting in an atmosphere, something begins to happen at once your convictions there is a shift there is an alignment that makes you and postures you to begin to receive of spiritual things first john chapter 5 
verse 11. And this is the record or this is the testimony that God has given unto us what? Eternal life. The word here is Zoe. I know we talk a lot about it. Eternal life is not life after death. Listen, listen. Eternal life is not life. It's not the life you receive after death. Right? What happens after death is the consummation. The consummation. Right? Eternal life is the divine life. God's own kind of life. Being supplanted in a human spirit and finding expression here and now in the earth realm. And the quality of that life, if it is of God, it should be able to conquer anything in this life, including death. But it is the ministration of that life that many people do not understand. So we... In, in the kingdom let me read the, the scripture let me not go ahead of myself it says and this is the record that god has given unto us what so it is clear from scripture that it has been given but how is the technology of that life transferred it says and this life is where it's in his son next verse it says he that had the son had that life and he that had not the son of god had not life watch this the bible tells us listen my goodness the primary purpose of receiving jesus that means you're coming to christ or you're coming accepting the lordship of christ in itself is not even the end it is the spiritual system with which the life of god gets to you the bible says the life of god is hidden in the christ himself right the son of god so the way you receive that life is to receive the son of god that's why we preach that's why souls must be won so it's it's not just trying to save people from going to hell alone it's the spiritual system with which the divine life gets to them i don't know if you understand what i'm saying now because if all that there was to being born again was going to heaven you would have left immediately you gave your life to christ so the technology is of course it secures your eternal destiny but the bible says god gave us life but that life is hidden in the son himself so that until you receive the son you cannot have life meaning you can be in church for years are you getting what i'm saying be around christian people for years but if you have not received the son it's impossible for you to have that life there are all kinds of life you can have your biological life you can have an occultic life sponsored by the agency of another spirit but if you are to have the very life of god so way god's quality and class of life you must embrace his son embracing the father will not give you that life hear me embracing an angel will not give you that life embracing revelation will not give you that life are you getting what i'm saying you must know what ministers that life it says and the life the office of the son of god jesus christ is the only means through which that life can be communicated how many people are in church they've been in church for years but they do not have this life of god because they have not embraced they are aware that the son of god exists are you getting what i'm saying they are aware that he died but they have not received of his life and the bible tells us that you receive now the question is what exactly is that eternal life what is eternal life really what is eternal life is it is it um is it a package that is given to us is it an inanimate thing that is just put in us is it a programming what exactly is eternal life i'll tell you eternal life is the presence of the eternal spirit of god in a man that's exactly what eternal life is eternal life is not a thing you are giving when you give your heart to jesus eternal life is the very entrance of the spirit of the living god to come and reside in you the extension 
as we call it in the Greek, Alos Parakletos, the one who has come to be a representation of the ministry of Jesus, here and now in your life. So my mortal body that if I come to Jesus Christ and I truly receive his son, that life, the only gate, that's why Jesus said, I am the way, not a way. I am the way, right? So the spirit of life, the very Holy Spirit can only find expression when you embrace the son. This scripture is a clarification or an explanation of Galatians chapter 3. Right? When you begin to read from verse 13 down, the Bible says, Christ has redeemed us from the cause of the law. It says, be made a cause for us. Look at me. Let me explain something to you. Do you know what makes the Old Testament old? Look up, look up, look up. Let me explain something to you. Do you know what makes the Old Testament old? Or when the Bible talks of the old man. He's talking about any entity that does not have the life-giving spirit is obsolete. The spiritual language is old. Are you getting the point? So it's not old because of time. I don't know if you understand what I'm saying. You know in the earth, if, if we bought this two years ago, we say this is old, this is new. In the spirit old is only compared to its quality with respect to the presence of the holy spirit that means an ideology is old to the degree to which the holy spirit is not involved in it again the reason why we call the ordinances of the past is not just because a new one has come if the new one came and the holy spirit is not in it it will still be old Are you getting what I'm saying now? So, what makes a thing fresh or new is not that it is happening for the first time. It is the very presence, the eternal life of God. That seed that conquers death, that conquers weakness. And the Bible so designed the body of Christ. Watch this. The body of Christ is supposed to be the vehicle that hosts the Holy Spirit. That's why the Bible says, for this cause, because people cannot discern the mystery, some are weak, some are sick, and some do sleep. Is that not in your Bible? It said there is a mystery of the body. The mystery of godliness, the Bible calls it, that Christ can dwell in a mortal body. He said if you do not discern it you will be weak you will be sick and you can even sleep meaning that immortality is only a possibility because of the presence of the eternal spirit of god but the 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 factor is this um in the kingdom there are two realities i want you to write this down what i'm teaching you tonight is powerful you will walk in the glory of God in supernatural dimensions if you understand what I'm saying. There are two realities that every believer contends with or walks with. Number one is the reality in Christ. The reality in Christ. The beginning of the experience of the believer in the New Testament starts in Christ. Outside of Christ, there is no initiation into the realities of the New Testament, right? The, the, the whole New Testament starts, the pivot on which our ministration of life is built upon is in Christ. In Christ. In Christ. In Christ. Never alone. For with God, all things are possible. Outside of Him, many things are not possible. For in Christ, we are complete. For in Christ, we are perfected. Are you getting the point now? But then there are realities in Christ. For instance, we are seated in heavenly places, the Bible tells us, in Christ. The other reality is the experience of that truth here and now. The experience of that truth here and now. You can call it the reality in Christ and then the experiential reality.
the bible tells us all through the new testament all that we have become in christ many times we do not understand why apostle paul when he makes certain statements about the believer he adds in christ and then we do not understand his communications some of us have been taught and maybe some of us sincerely misled that the moment it has happened in christ it means that the the experience of it is manifest here and now that's not true paul himself speaking to the hebrew church in chapter 2 begins to clarify right and he tells us certain things he tells us we do not yet see all things Let, let's turn there paul gives us a contrast that will help us in our spiritual growth hebrews are you blessed tonight i have the sun and i have eternal life he who has the sun has eternal life two verse seven and eight let's look at seven and eight hebrews two verse seven and eight he says thou hast made him remember paul was quoting from david it was david the son of jesse right the king who by revelation into the mysteries of the kingdom wrote this he said to none of the angels right has he said at any point thou art my son you know this and that he did not put the world in subjection to any angel and then the bible says talking about man now he said you have made him or in in, in uh, talking about jesus now in his earthly work he says you have made him a little lower than the angels the word there was mistranslated it's supposed to be uh angelio not necessarily like the beings but it's an expression of god himself many times you see the bible use the word angel to mean the very lord himself is that not true many times in scripture you will see that and uh, uh, certain times the word angel is written in italics meaning that there is more explanation to it it doesn't mean an angel like a messenger from the presence of the lord but god himself so it says the word there is supposed to be thou hast made him a little lower than eloha god himself the almighty so jesus lowered in rank for the purpose of coming to become a man in the earth right he says thou hast crowned him now he's talking about his coronation this was the coronation that david saw the lord said to my lord right sit thou at my right hand until i make your enemies your footstool so he says it here that thou crownest him with what glory and honor and you did set him over the works of your hand verse 8 thou hast put all things in subjection under his feet for in that he put all things in subjection under him he left nothing that it, listen i hope you realize that in the new testament you are not anything until christ is first it are you getting what i'm saying now so every time you see the bible talking about man find out whether christ has become that thing if christ has not become it because he must be the firstborn in all things meaning the dimension that the christ did not show us a possibility of getting there is no point trying to get there this is what i'm saying are you getting the point we can contend even more than the earthwork of jesus because he said this verily verily i say unto you he that believes in me is that not in your bible the works that i do in other words he said my eternal life is not compressed to four gospels if i stayed longer i would have unveiled more possibilities now if you have my life I authorize you to keep exploring the possibilities and immortality is one of the possibilities in that life divine health is one of the possibilities in that life the ability to live supernatural though natural is one of the possibilities we must be able to stretch the possibilities what are the contents of this Zoe life what does it consist of what are the benefits why should I want to receive the life of god is like a product you are marketing to me convince me why should i want it what is the excellency of god's life over my natural life are you getting what i'm saying so the bible tells us 
speaking about man but that man was not just man like you that man was first the man christ are you getting what i'm saying now i know that when you read this scripture he says who is man that thou art mindful of him that man is not just talking about the natural man he's first talking about the firstborn and all he has called into glory because he died as the only begotten son then he resurrected as the first of the begotten and from there he had 120 other begotten sons and from there there are many begotten sons so jesus is no longer the only begotten son of the father by the spirit of adoption we have come into that sonship too are you are you understanding what i'm teaching you and so the bible tells us that when you receive of that son you receive of that life that life is like a drug the presence of the holy spirit the moment he finds expression certain reactions begin to happen watch this he opens you up to the realities so jesus in the new testament becomes what we call our pattern man jesus came and walked for three and a half years to show us an example of what the zoe life is are you getting it? he was the first that opened us up to the possibility of the zoe life so when we saw the things that he did we saw the mighty things that he did the first that had the spirit without measure and he did so many things and then he told us that uh -uh, it is profitable for you that i go for if i do not go i cannot send the comforter he will come and continue he will be an extension of my ministry the holy spirit is to us today what jesus was to the 12 disciples exactly what jesus was to the 12 disciples the holy spirit is to us today that's the reason why there are no three thrones in heaven there are only two thrones in heaven but we agree that there is the father the son and the holy spirit because the third throne is in us there is a marriage that has been done never to be separated again are you are you getting that now it is him that takes us to the god class the presence of the holy spirit are we are we understanding what i'm teaching tonight so the realities in christ and then our experience of that reality the bible says something very powerful here it said thou hast put all things in subjection under his feet right for in that he put all things under his feet he left nothing that is not under him at what point did this happen to man jesus himself said this when he resurrected what did he say he said all hail he told the disciples he says all authority exousia delegated power has been given to me when he was in the earth all authority let me say something that looks controversial when he was in the earth all authority and power over all the earth was not given to him i hope you know absolutely that's the reason why when he was sending the disciples with his power he told them it will only work when you go to the lost tribe of israel don't go outside that jurisdiction is it not in your bible so when jesus resurrected he now said now the scope a coronation has happened to me right the same way it happened to adam that dominion mandate has been restored and he said now all authority has been given he says go in that light in other words in christ the bible says that we've been made to sit with him above all thrones and dominions and power and every name that is named both in this life and in the life to come that's what the apostle was trying to explain there but he leaves a disclaimer he says but now everybody say but now are you seeing in christ all things have been perfected but now the experience of that reality he says but now we see not what is paul saying now paul you just told us now that in christ all things are finished is that not true when jesus hung on the cross he said it is finished look at this the thieves that were on the cross one was telling him ah paraphrasing now 
we saw you do a lot of miracles is it that you can't bring us down from the cross another person was saying when you get there so they were all thinking of a lot of things but jesus said today he was giving him a revelation that in christ there is an experience so in christ you are healed in christ you are prosperous is that true in christ you are free from every yoke and every curse and everything but then translating that experience it does not just profit you in christ gives you access but it does not make it a reality that you can handle now there is a system with which you can take that which is in christ and make it happen here and now i hope you know that a man on a wheelchair the price for his healing has been paid why is he still on the wheelchair i don't know if you understand what i'm saying every sinner in hell today from the time jesus came the price for their salvation has been paid why are they in hell as merciful as the mercy of jesus is are you getting the point now so there is a difference between realities in christ and the experience the realities in christ give us a window to the things we can claim and the possibilities that are there on account of the zoe life that we have but that does not mean because you saw it in christ automatically it will find expression here and now i don't know if you understand what i'm saying so you can read in scripture that by his stripes i am healed but here and now you do not see that perfected in your life right you've seen that we've been redeemed from every curse of the law and all the ordinances the, the handwritings and the and all the things that have spoken against us they've been nailed to the cross but you are watching right there at 25 there was a miscarriage your younger sister at 25 there was a miscarriage obviously a demonic pattern finding expression so did god lie no it's just that we have not been taught the system of making the realities in christ to become our reality is god speaking to us now so most believers just see oh in christ and then this is how they respond god forbid i have seen it in the bible i will never be sick i will never be broke and then you are getting broke you are getting sick because what you saw is not a lie but the ability to translate it here and now have many people not read that this sign shall follow them that believe in my name they shall what how many people are casting out devils how many do you know in my name they will speak with new tongues how many innocent believers do you know have struggled for years praying and fasting for the baptism of the holy spirit and seemingly it did not come how many times have you walked to a sick body with every confidence the bible says heal the sick right raise the dead cast out devils it says freely you have received freely give in christ in christ in christ how do we make that experience here and now because if we do not learn this eventually we are going to hate god because we we'll think he's a liar a deceiver I'm very concerned let me tell you sincerely at how distant we are from the things we talk about the things we claim and the experience of the same are you getting what I'm saying there is too much talk in the body of Christ we must humble ourselves and admit that there are certain things we do not yet understand because there is too much talk about who God is what he can do we make such bold statements about God but when it comes to bringing God in the scene bringing his power here and now we begin to find theological explanations to excuse ourselves the Bible says for instance Jesus Christ the same when today and forever how many preachers do you know have said that how many of us men of God have said that how many of us have been able to reproduce that reality 
we must admit that there is something we are not understanding we must admit that there is a dimension of spiritual reality we are missing and let me tell you where we are missing it this is it romans chapter 8 let me tell you where we are missing it very seriously and if we do not change a lot is going to go wrong Eight verse five. Eight verse five. In fact, let's start. Okay, verse five. Everyone read. It says, For they that are after the flesh, do what? Do mind the things of the flesh. But they that are after the spirit, the things of the spirit. Verse six. For to be what? stop the word carnal there is the word sensual it's not supposed to be it's not a bad word in terms of carnal doesn't mean immoral or maybe in a negative sense it just means that when you are carnal the limitation the scope of your judgment and your assessment of spiritual things is either intellectual scientific or sensual that's the limitation that's the circumference it says to be carnally minded whoever lives his life from that standpoint that your perspective about life is just how one plus one will become two it must be logical it must be scientific the bible says any man that thinks like that is already dying think about that it says for to be carnally minded is what death but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. So a man can watch oppression in his life and say, no, I went to school. What, what sort of oppression? I mean, if, if you fail, you fail. It's not any demon, anything. You see that? And then he does not know that the whole world lies in wickedness. That all that you see is not all that there is. There are many people, for instance, who look up and say there is no God because they are carnally minded. They, they reason from the sensual realm. Let me tell you, the church of the Lord Jesus Christ, in a bit, and I teach you principles, we just finished having financial principles, but in a bid to break life down into an understandable format, we are gradually coming down from that height of spirituality to reduce God into a carnal mathematical formula. So there is, a, there is a mathematics that is responsible for healing. There is a mathematics that is responsible for A and B and C. And then we throw the Holy Spirit out and gather those informations and feel on the strength of these informations, I can make it. Yet, the Bible says all scripture was inspired, was written, right? By the inspiration of who? The Holy Ghost, the very Spirit of life the spirit of truth the one that was sent to make the reality of this divine life true in us we have thrown him away and we have reduced everything if you cannot explain it like mathematics i don't believe i don't understand i throw it away it's gradually destroying us even our presentation of the gospel we are seeking to make sinners as though the gospel is not supernatural we try to beat it down and make it as mathematical as possible. Whereas, the Bible tells us that as you are speaking to people, the law of the spirit of life is supplanting the law of sin and death. How do you explain that mathematically? So there are people carrying all kinds of demonic substances and all medicine can tell you is, this is this, this is that. You see, it happens at times. There are women who based on the way they are formed they don't have wombs you just happen to be one of them god is faithful and all of that and then you sit down and believe that that's how it is the bible says to be carnally minded let me tell you the truth if we do not grow i'm not against intellectualism right there's always that saying that you should not be so heavenly minded that you are of no earthly relevance um, that is true 
but if you are truly spiritually minded you cannot be irrelevant to the earth are you getting what i'm saying see i read books i i have studied a lot of people there is no man who works based on the truth of this scripture that will be irrelevant in this life this is the dispensation of spiritual men we have left dispensation of physical strength of giants we are we are gradually leaving the dispensation of intellectualism there are too many questions medicine cannot answer our governments are failing flawlessly because there is a principality that can sit down over a region and they try policies after policies here comes the generation of the spiritual men those who can tell the government you have done all you know to do can you finally pay attention to us those who changed the world in the bible were not just foolish people just intellectualizing everything these were men daniel daniel for instance he understood that persia there was a spiritual host of wickedness around that territory and he knew the key to sustaining a smooth flow of that government was prayer the moment he prayed the spirits of the medes and the persians were disturbed and they used individuals to pass a government policy don't pray just for 30 days can you imagine just 30 days of no prayer and we will wreck babylon and the king passed it and daniel said no i'm a spiritual man i'm not just i, I know i'm intelligent i'm a government representative but i remember the prayer of my fathers I, 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 are you getting the point i remember the temple of solomon it was solomon while dedicating the temple part of his request he said lord whoever faces this temple and prays hearken to them and he opened his window towards jerusalem he said i know i'm intellectual but i'm not so stupid i know the mystery that brought me to this palace because i came as a captive there was a mystery beyond mathematics that brought me here and then they caught him i can imagine other people saying well you claim everything is god 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 now let god save you and the lions were roaring brothers and sisters that was physical the lion is a fierce beast but there was going to be a playing of the spiritual the superiority the excellency of the spiritual as soon as he stepped in an angel came said daniel so you have not forgotten you have not forgotten where you come from how many of us have forgotten you see that there are so many people talk about god right now they become irritated if you talk in church it's okay but you talk about god outside to people they just say kind i beg jare you are talking business you are trying to scatter everything as though god is the reason why all things will not work let me tell you if you ignore god in any aspect of your life get set for a shock because the realm of the spirit is still alive and strong how many ladies think they will marry because they are fine they get up around they don't pray they don't listen they say god forbid yeah, i know that i know what god gave me be celebrating there until you find out that you are 45 years and as pretty as you are because there there are realities in the spirit my brothers and sisters there are realities i got a testimony from i got a testimony from um administration we went for in kaduna that 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 blessed me one of the pastors um came over to my place yesterday and he was telling me when i went for the meeting a woman was pregnant brothers and sisters watch this at least biology tells us i'm not a doctor there are doctors here um so how the child is supposed to be formed eventually for reasons they cannot explain the child started turning mysteriously no the child does not turn mysteriously something turned it let me tell you the oldest man in the earth is not up to 120 there are spirits that are millions of years you call satan a liar you are right you call him a deceiver you are right you call him a fool you are very wrong satan is old are you hearing that absolutely you know sometimes the way people just talk me god forbid my spirit can do this and that and that it's not all about this it's not and and while you are talking the realm of the spirit is just watching you how old do you know in bible days all of us are not even up to teenagers right now right yet the ancient spirit of god 
gives us a prescription about how to live and he says if you want life and peace be spiritually minded be spiritually minded do not let education do not let intellectualism money or anything take away that spiritual factor it has nothing to do with a man of god it is the key to life and peace we have thrown the holy spirit we feel he's only relevant in church right so when you go to your job and all of that people say now let's 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 be real let's be real while this the bible says i am the truth i am reality when god began to build and train me god made it a necessity and he let me know that forever in my at work the holy spirit will be and will remain the mystery behind any impact any transformation you see that for me the spirit of the living god is not just one nuisance that you have to embrace so that god will like you he is what you call eternal life if you are not aware of that be aware eternal life is not what he brings his very presence is the life of god jesus never became the christ he was the son of the carpenter he could die that's why his parents ran away with him but when the spirit of god came he made him the christ so when the bible says in christ it's not just saying in jesus alone in jesus yes but together with the spirit of life Look at what we have taught people about faith today. Look at the, the nonsense that goes on in the body of Christ that we call faith. Right? We teach people all kinds of experiences as if it's voodoo. That's why it's not working. Let me tell you, faith is a product of an encounter. When the Bible says faith comes by hearing, do you hear what you read? Answer me you see we need to examine he was talking it was a spiritual language he was not even just talking about hearing with the ear there is a quality of spiritual perception that an encounter brings and that's what produces true faith because when the bible says hearing and hearing by the word at that time there was no books like this king james had not authorized this so what did they call the word The days that are coming will be fierce. The days that are coming will be spiritual. Right now, have you seen the way the world is going lately? There is no embarrassment about spirituality again. Is that true? Everybody is opening up. It used to be in secrecy before. But right now, there is an open confrontation. It's like everybody is saying, Kai, I'm not hiding it again. I'm gay. Simple. Kill me if you will kill me. Up. It's not today. It has been like that. Another person saying, it's not only you, two or four too. Another person saying, let me tell you, I've not been a real Christian. This is my charm. Oh yeah. You see, everybody is confessing one by one. One by one. The meaning of that is, darkness is about to reveal itself publicly. Right? And it will bring everyone in a position to sustain a spiritual system to be higher than it or become a victim. someone is building a house with blocks and cement when you are about to complete it and give thanksgiving the next week one small wind will just shake and you will come and not even see the two cores of blocks it will scatter everything what sort of wind is that is it now wind started how many hurricanes are on right now and scientists say they watch from space that before the hurricanes comes they see images of spirits doing things from the sea minutes later you see all the animals running they are still spiritual except human beings disaster hardly meets animals there they run away and leave us we are there trying to make money we are dead and we are dying like chickens
this is a spiritual generation listen this is a generation where it's no longer the issue of are you a pastor or not to be serious to be spiritually minded the holy spirit is the advantage of this generation i am convinced that we are the generation that will return christ yes i am convinced the bible specifically talks about a number of things that as we call it that omega generation there are certain happenings that will characterize our generation hallelujah that we discern spiritual things let me give you an instance hold on let me explain something how many people in church today have thrown away the sacredness of being a man of God and the fivefold ministry in an attempt to balance these bossy things men of God do on stage, right? There are so many people who now challenge their pastors, challenge everybody. Are you the only one who will preach? Are you the only one? We have a democratic church that can vote out, throw out pastors because of policies. Have you read in 1 Samuel, I can't remember, I think maybe chapter 15 or 13, one time when Saul, is that true? When Samuel told Saul that they should go and have a solemn assembly, is that true? He was coming to make a sacrifice. They gathered the people, it's in your Bible. And then Saul told, the, I mean Samuel said he's coming at so and so time and he didn't come. And they waited for him, they waited for him, they waited for him. After they waited for him, people were scattering. And the ego of the king, Saul, was, was at stake. And he said, Kai, this guy is not coming. Let me what? Offer the bond offering. As soon as he offered the bond offering, Samuel came. And he said, well, uh, I'm, I'm sorry, honestly. I was afraid. It's not like I wanted. I mean, too, I didn't want to do it. The people were disturbing me. And since you were not around, I thought since I was a king, let me do it. And Samuel said, you have done foolishly. He said, if you had allowed me to come, God would have established your throne. So it would have now been son of Saul, not son of David. He said, because you have done this, the kingdom is taken to you. For God has found another man after his heart. Just for violating the priesthood. How many people violate the priesthood today? And they don't care. Right? All kinds of people. Any man can get up at any point lambast any man of god write any article and speak and believe he will go scot free go and read your bible it's because we have become carnally minded we don't even know what it means to be a man of god we think being a man of god is choosing the vocation of preaching right so that when one walk or the other doesn't work or maybe you read something that you felt is, is not lucrative you just say talk it's okay at least you are preaching you see this is our mindset so we do not we have thrown the sacredness that is in the altar there were times in the bible that when a priest and a prophet was not available to do certain things they left it there have you read about Uza in the bible i'm showing you how we have fallen from understanding spiritual standards the bible says we do not discern the body of christ and many people have received casualties because we do not know how the body was supposed to operate. Right? Remember that there was a time when the ark of God was being carried back and then he was about to fall and an innocent man called Uza, for his sincere love for God wanted to run and just block the ark. What happened to him? He died instantly. Have you read your Bible when Miriam and Aaron looked at their brother and said, Kai, see you, you are our younger brother. Don't open eye for us here. Is it only you that God will speak to? Huh? We were all born by this and that and Moses didn't say anything. What happened? A cloud came at once. Miriam became as white as snow. White as snow. Right? And Aaron, Aaron, it was just because of the priesthood position that shielded him. We have lost touch with spiritual mysteries because we want to do everything carnally. When they tell a man that God is able to do a miracle for you and that in, in, in five months, God can open you to fountains of blessings. You know, they look around and say, eh, I know. It's not like I'm saying God cannot do it, but you see, 
we have to calculate how A will become B and how C will become D. Look at how people try to run ministry today. Right? They try to run ministry in all kinds of funny ways. Look at how people try to generate finances for ministry. When you see that, you know that we have hopelessly lost touch with spiritual reality. How did they build the tabernacle in the Old Testament? Because they were there for 40 years in the wilderness. How did the supply come? How did their clothes grow with them and their sandals? Today, if we were before the Red Sea, this is what Apostle Joshua Selma would have done. Engineers, where are you? The spirit of Bazalel. And then we'll start constructing a bridge. We'll say, that if I'm a prophet, in five years we'll cross this Red Sea. See that? That's how we would have worked. That's how much we have reduced God. That's exactly what we would have done. And then the engineers come. And we say, okay, let's start doing everything. Let's start, architects come. Let's start, and then where are the kingdom financiers? And then prayer department, where are, and then we keep praying. And God says, is that all to me? And then after five years, we say now you will cross the bridge slowly. And while we are crossing, we'll be singing choruses. And when we reach there, I will put a, menu, a monument. Prophecy walked into motion by Apostle Joshua Selma. Shame on us. Because we call that the Old Testament. We laugh at them. We even say they are a shadow of us. Are you joking? Read Hebrews 11. There are men who in their humanity, we cannot even touch their shoes. Yet, they, that's the Old Testament. We are very quick to say it's old. We have done away with it. But we have not done one-tenth of the things that they have done. It's in your Bible. People invoke angels to use hailstone and stone their enemies. When was the last time you saw that? When was the last time you saw angels pursuing Boko Haram with hailstones? You are laughing. It's a serious thing. Look at bomb blasts happening on around. And there are men of God all around. And we claim we are anointed. They even put it on our posters when they invite us. Anointed man. Joshua Selman. Shame on us. Let me tell you. If this is what we think will bring Christ back, we are joking. How many barren women have we been unable to solve their problems? Look at, look at Jesus. Jesus inspires me. These guys who were with the guy that was crippled, they knew that if they could only see Jesus, that situation would be over. Is it not in your Bible? And they said, let's tear this man's ceiling. We will explain it to him afterwards. Today we brag and compare ourselves with ourselves. Is that true? And do a lot of carnal things. There is almost no difference between what we do and the supernatural or and, 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 and that of unbelievers. If I stand right now and I minister to Sam and he falls under the anointing, people shamefully write an article and say he's using witchcraft. Where did we leave our spirituality? Is it not in your Bible that Jesus with the divine light walked through people on a cliff? They were trying to kill him. He walked through them like a spirit. Where is that generation? I wanted to show us a video. It's just that um, we, we, we didn't have it. I didn't discuss with the media. Would have shown us that video um, of Patricia King. Right? I know they don't have it. They may not have it now. Otherwise, you would have watched the video where oil was coming directly from heaven. Real oil. Physical oil. You would have seen the foot of real angels. That you are not pressing into God doesn't mean some other people are not. The divine life we shout zoe we shout zoe but there is nothing zoe about our lives if they shoot me i die zoe right every ep every epidemic is in the society and it embraces me zoe now i don't say this in a derogatory way i'm saying this to challenge us i guarantee you if we learn how to receive that zoe life you will watch HIVs get healed as if they do not exist. It will no longer even be a prayer point. The more I see people line up for counseling, I don't rejoice to say, wow, it means I'm an anointed man. 
I look at people line up for counseling and I bleed in my heart because I say shame on us. It means we are doing very small. A sign that we are doing so much is that the people in the church should be so impacted they should now go out and begin to transform people. But today we say, wow, I had a crowd, hundreds of people, to, to mean that ministry is moving forward. Wrong parameters. Because there is nothing spiritual that we can use to gauge our standard. Who is God speaking to tonight? Where have you reduced God? Let me tell you. One day, maybe I'll come in the night, I'll bring a chair here, one coin on here. We'll just sit down and we'll discuss. And I'll share with you some of my encounters when God began to walk with me. Some of you, if I share it as you are seated now, you've seen me every day. You've even eaten with me, but you will not believe it. Because you say it's a lie. Encounters with angels. All kinds of spiritual encounters. Because I believe in him. I believe in him. I'll never forget the first time I had the audible voice of God. Let me tell you something. If you hear God, you must have faith. You see that? It's not about maybe I'm trying to calculate. You must have faith. Listen. At the, at the Mount of Transfiguration, when Elijah and Moses appeared, what did Peter do? Peter recognized them immediately. Had he ever seen them? Who told him? He said, what? I see three people. It's a privilege. That means I have questions to ask. Let's prepare three beds. One for Elijah, one for Moses, because he thought they came to pass the night with Jesus and discuss a lot of things. When an angel appeared to Mary, Mary was not afraid. Mary was a natural occurrence. It was the salutation she was afraid of, not the angel. Today, if somebody says, I see an angel, say, I beg, Jerry, angel, where you think angels are just like that? Yet the Bible says, are they not ministering spirits? I'm showing you why we have become carnal. We threw away the Holy Spirit. We are gradually kicking the Holy Spirit out in a bid to do what we call word, 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 word. Right? Word, word, word. Just the word. Give me the word and, and don't give me anything else. There are even people who reject Jesus and say, just give me Bible. Give me Bible, Jesus, go. Once it's not Bible, even Jesus should go away. And the devil likes that theology. If it is Bible you want, Zondavan, keep publishing. New versions keep coming out. And we keep carrying the Bible. And we convince ourselves that because we are holding Bible and reading it, we are growing in the world. But we are becoming carnal. That's why death is rampant. It is that carnality. Do you know that our forefathers were more spiritual than us? Is that true? Witchcraft in the village is not a shock. An average young boy in the village has seen some form of witchcraft. So if they tell him somebody can appear and disappear, he will believe it. But in the church, ah, if I disappear here now, now, in this place, finally the article will be complete. The article you have been writing, you will pay New Nigeria tomorrow morning to publish it. Confirm. Hey. Which is on suit. Yet we talk about the mighty army that is rising up. Mighty army. Where is the army? Truly there is an army that is rising up. But let me tell you, our level of transformation is slow. We are hardly becoming like the Christ. There is, there is a standard that has been measured for us. And the greatest of us is just a step out of the cave. We must sustain a technology to hurry up and to catch up. The church call spiritual growth prosperity since every other spiritual thing like healing and the rest is very hard we have left it and then remedied it with money so when i come in with a nice suit and i come and say am i is the word not working let me tell you the truth if that's what you think you go to a meeting where you see people popping champagne of hundred thousand which which pastor or which christian can hardly do that in nigeria there are people lavishing resources we have reduced ourselves and match our spirituality. So if I come out with a jeep, if there are five jeeps that are lined up here, you say, man, God is in Koinonia. What? Five jeeps? He's here. Oh. In Bible days, 
men were called generals on the strength of heavy capacity in the spirit one man will threaten a nation not a politician but elijah not in a radio station he made a declaration to the heavens he vetoed the prayer request of everybody and said me i speak there will not be rain not god revealed to me i stand in my office over this territory and i said there will not be rain and he went to bed it was by sorcery jezebel found out he was the one and she swore to remove his head how many men of god have disgraced themselves on television how many men of god have disgraced their ministries in newspapers how many men of god predicted that 2012 is his rapture huh how many you see how we, we we just showed the whole world that we have been lying for years instead of even keeping it quietly to now be pressing for forgiveness and transformation we now went on air to publicly embarrass ourselves it's gotta be more gotta be more it's gotta be more than this it's gotta be more gotta be more today people talk about the anointing but they do not even know what the anointing is no at all i tell you many people do not even know what the anointing is we have reduced god to prosperity because that's the only physical show of progress right we have left the harder ones like healing and speaking over nations and forcefully bringing people to the cross those ones are very intricate you can't fake those ones so we have thrown them and then we ran to the easy ones we make money and make two and two together and then we now say it's working it's not working no we have to be, admit this thing and press into god part of my goals in life is to so align to the holy spirit that my life becomes a true expression of the divine life i was told about one or two cases of some women here in this place who are here right now right i think one of them is a miscarriage issue i'll minister to her shortly and then another person the question is if that happens in your church what will you tell them i know what you will tell them i know what you will tell them you don't have faith if you have faith you will provoke my oil there's no problem with my own end it's you that don't, you are liars we are must be a generation that can present christ to the world in his fullness i truly believe i will be part of those people with all my heart i desire to see the fullness of his glory find expression i have received the son and that means i believe that his life is in me but where is that life we are only seeing fragments of it fragments of it but there is a revival that is coming this will be a revival of the spirit himself when the spirit of god will start schooling people by ourselves because all the schools of ministry we have done and everything we have ended up making people just like us the spirit of god in these days the lord has started revealing this to me throughout last week i've been under an intense anointing right from when i finished the, the financial series and the holy ghost told me he will personally begin to teach people as many who are interested there will be such a move of the spirit i'm telling you god will begin to tutor people and the more you see him the more you will know preachers are lying the more you encounter him the more, the more you will know that people are sincere but liars the lord is revealing this to me this is how god trained me god taught me so many things secrets in the bible there are times that i will the lord will be visiting me and his presence physical cloud i'm not talking of some spooky vision that people lie about real cloud like a fog will fill the room and i'll lie down there and the pages of my bible will be turning by themselves to certain scriptures i hope you believe it hallelujah we have reduced god we have reduced god is this is too bad to an extent that if somebody on a wheelchair stands up people look and they say kai who knows him look at how you put pressure on men of god 
people come for miracle service, we have to be asking them, where are you coming from? So that you don't think that they organize things around. It's a shame. It's a shame. It says, he that has a son has life. Has life. Look at what Jesus did. An example of what we should become. Jesus, five loaves and two fish, he multiplied it. Everywhere he went, he was doing good. Everywhere we go, we are doing bad or at least average. And yet we claim to have his spirit. There are people who even brag and say, I have the spirit of Jesus without measure. Where is it? Where, where did you keep the spirit of Jesus without measure? There is no sincerity in our pursuit of God. We tell a lot of lies. I was teaching a school of ministry students yesterday and I was telling them that the reason why many people do not grow is because we lie. I can fake it now and say there's somebody here, you have a stomach ache and somebody will arise. And because I did not minister in truth, my lie will... Do you know that you can lie for a long time until it looks like the truth to you? How many people don't pray? They come on stage and run their mouth and speak nonsense. I am a prayer warrior, but there is a, there is a touch of the throne that comes on every man of prayer. It follows their teachings. It's like a spirit. It's like a finishing on your words. If you are a man of the altar, it truly, that fire, it's not just the shouting. There is a communication of life. How many people claim they are prayer warriors? And they stand and speak. And while they are speaking, you die spiritually until you start sleeping physically. Because there is no life that is coming. The question God is asking you is why did you stop believing in me? Many of us did not start like this. God is speaking to us. Many of us, when we started, we were spiritual. We meant business with God eventually as we started getting some results in our lives we have thrown the holy spirit out now we are left with letters convincing ourselves that because we are reading scriptures it means we are growing spiritually do you not see the need in our world today there are people with hiv cancer there are people in need of the zoe life that we claim to have we claim to have zoe i am an ambassador of the kingdom then demonstrate it he said, when I came to you, I did not come in the excellency or the eloquence of speech. Because I know the danger that it can do to you. But when I came, I came in a demonstration. I came to prove to you. I came to bring the Jesus of your Bible to be made manifest here and now. Ah, this is the theme of my life. That everywhere I go, I become an expression of his reality. That no matter how you do not believe in God, when I show up, you can at least see something that convinces you of the reality of the Christ. Right now, demons sit in our congregations while we are gyrating and singing and worshiping. They are joining us in the worship because there is absolutely nothing that can kick them out. When we finish, we say, Kai, it was a wonderful service. Together, let's share the grace. And they join us and share the grace. Demons mock men of God all around. And we give all kinds of explanations for it. Do you not see what is happening to the body of Christ? But the Holy Ghost revealed this to me. That in the seasons that are coming, personally, He's going to start leading men into strange encounters and tutorials. Where in a sleep, you will see a strange man come to you. And begin to tell you, right, I want to teach you the mystery of spiritual power. And when you wake up in the morning, like, like Solomon... An intelligence you cannot account for all of a sudden this is how this is how God trained me oh this is how God trained me I remember a time in my life when I was sleep in the night this happened for almost two months and at least one of God's generals will come to me in dreams explaining to me their perspectives I remember many of the people that have browsed and have taken from their lives I remember a man called Peter Tan. The first time I would meet that man was in a vision. The first time I ever saw Apostle Paul, it was in a vision. I didn't even know he was the one. 
I just saw a man who was short and bald headed after speaking to me. Then I asked, Who are you? And he didn't respond to me. He moved a while and then he turned and said, Paul. The first time I would see the picture on the internet, I said, This is the man I saw. Yet we know we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses. The name Koinonia was a revelation. It's not that I just sat down and said, Kai, what should we call it now? No, no. Right now, everything we do is sensual and carnal. The exact blueprint and the things that we're doing in this ministry were a revelation. A revelation by God. It was the Spirit of God that revealed to me the secret of church growth. Now, I'm not saying I'm throwing away materials and all of that. It's good. I've, I've, I've taught us to build ourselves. But I'm saying, Koinonia, hear me. If we throw away the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of God. Let me have somebody here. Just one person. Anybody. We're a visitor. We're a pastor. Don't worry. You came all the way. Or you served in Jigawa and you are here right now. Your face is new. The Lord will use you greatly. I know you came with a hunger from your heart. I will use you as an example and may that example be your experience. Huh? Hallelujah. Watch this. This is how God designed us to walk. Never separated from the Holy Spirit. If you are looking for women, look for it with him. If he approves it, then he's right. Are you hearing what I'm saying? If you are talking about ladies, let it be with his presence. If you are eating, let it be with him. See, let me tell you something. The Holy Spirit is not a person you leave. And then when you come for koinonia, oh, sweet Holy Spirit, I, I love you. And, and all those things we say, I, I love you. You are my all in all. You are, you are this and that and, and all those kind of things that we bring. The Holy Spirit was sent literally, literally to continue the ministry of Jesus. If you want to know everything the Holy Spirit should do in your life, study Jesus in the Gospels. The Holy Spirit is all that and more. All that and more. There was a time I said, Holy Spirit, now you have to, what am I supposed to expect in your ministry? And he told me, he said, study Jesus. That's what he told me. Everything you ever see Jesus do to the disciples, expect the Holy Spirit to do to you, including revealing himself. There was a day he wanted to reveal himself and he said, who do men say I am? One day the Holy Ghost will ask you, who do men say I am? Say, yeah, you are the spirit of this. You are the... And then he says, who do you call me? And he said, I don't know you. And he says, now right, my name is the spirit of life. And to you that becomes a revelation. At once you begin to minister life because his words bring impartation. When was the last time you heard the voice of God? Not the one you are lying about. The real voice of God. When was the last time the presence of God came into your room in worship? Let me show you where we have thrown him away. When was the last time you locked yourself? When was the last time you even went for retreat? See, some of you are just remembering that there's a word called retreat. Because you've forgotten about it. You know advancement. You don't know retreat. Unfortunately in the kingdom, you must retreat to advance. That you shut everything and you began to worship until the temple, your temple now, not a building, is filled with his glory. And songs begin to come. Look at what musicians write. Nonsense! They, they write songs that don't bless anybody. They just come up with songs. The reason why we argue whether songs are scriptural or not is because most of them came from the belly of hungry people who are activating multiple streams of income. When was the last time you stood in his presence and you began to worship until your worship became a song and you touched a depth in the spirit that resonated in your spirit? When was the last time you went to minister, man of God, and you stood in that meeting and when you finished, people were shaking. They could not explain what happened. They knew that something heavenly, like the dew of the morning came upon them. They may not even remember what you thought, but they knew they carried the spirit. 
when was the last time because of your teaching someone just turned and said lord i will seek you and lock yourself three days do that today in our generation and people say you are over spiritualizing things so god is not like that this guy came all the way from where from from jigawa state to come for a meeting because there is a hunger it's not a conference it's not a convention but hunger brought him right god must show us something in this generation otherwise these games that we're playing will end up frustrating us god must show us something that's my cry as a man of god i cry to god and i say lord i don't want to do the ordinary there is something you've got to show me that's why i love my secret place those who are close to me know that my life is like a herbalist my life is like a herbalist you don't see me roaming around the street eating granite and moving around. i say ah it's a joyful day no i'm on a pursuit i'm on a serious pursuit i seek his face for a living i seek his face for a living i seek his face because my relevance is tied to his face my relevance is tied to his glory my ability to translate the realities in christ let me tell you something my my goal i've seen it in visions but they have not happened i saw one time in a vision let me share with you one vision that i had one time i i say it jokingly but truly truly i had a vision and a ghastly motor accident happened ghastly motor accident as it was happening it's like i was caught up from somewhere a physical location with my body and all of a sudden i appeared there and it was just like a shadow like this just passed through those dead bodies and including the car there was a sound like the car the way it hit the impact it came back as though nothing had happened ah may god bring us to those days may god bring us to those days may god bring us to those days a day when you speak to the earth to fight boko haram and let the ministry rest you invoke the power of creation the soul of the earth and you find is it not in your bible where you see that many things happen to people flies came from everywhere to disturb the nation of israel because god wanted his people to go this bow and arrow we are using can only go so far we are desperately in need of a spiritual generation AK-47 can only do his best. But let me tell you, AK-47 is limited. Because Boko Haram and all the people, they know that it is now a spiritual affair. Traditional hunters in Meduguri have dared the military to leave them because they say they understand how to invoke the powers. You see that? The whole world is already crying for a supernatural dimension. That dimension is coming even if you are not interested there are people who have pledged their lives to contend in the spirit for you to do that you must give up this mindset of trying to build a career in ministry because you have to be a fool to get to that kind of dimension but how many people are that willing bless you how many people are that willing how many people are that willing to see the power of god transformation and renewal is the key to making the realities in Christ to become a reality in your life right now I made up my mind that everywhere I go to preach I don't like people turning to me and say man of God your message was powerful powerful in what I want to see how much the gates of hell was shut down as a result of that I want to see how revival stepped into a city as a result of my coming not just that a great man of God visited a place that's not enough and this life is in his son he who has the son has this divine life but the divine life is useless if we just leave it in Christ it must be translated to find expression the more of God's life and God's glory 
transports itself from the realm of the spirit to your present life the more you are fulfilling what the bible calls the mystery of godliness and then you become as i would say the envoys of his presence carriers of his glory carriers of his power then you will see the eyes of the blind open then you will see the ears of the deaf unstopped hallelujah while i was ministering over the weekend there was a woman who i don't know if they went to wash her ear or something and then the ear was blocked during the workers conference of cdc and i called the woman out and standing face to face i said i can either ruin this woman's life with lies or give her something that is of the truth one time Benny Hinn was laying hands on people and they were falling down and or a robots looked at him and said Benny don't just lay hands on them he said give them something oh fine can you spare 10 minutes for us to watch the video right now media is ready with the video okay media just just play guys maybe you can sit down and then after that you come up let's let's give the media 10 minutes to play the video and um it's a video of the supernatural is to spoil you and then i'll come up and, and and wrap up very quickly hi we're in san juan puerto rico where there's an amazing outpouring of the supernatural taking place the lord is touching so many lives in amazing ways angelic visitation uh you very unique signs and wonders which will actually show you in a few moments you'll be absolutely astounded at what the lord is doing but it's especially touching the younger generation on this island who are getting so fired up for god there seems to be an acceleration of souls getting saved healings deliverances miracles all those good things with people deepening in their worship and and loving the word of god and so it's a it's a true revival that is hitting people's hearts as these signs and wonders are being poured out so we're at the house of uh, restoration and mercy with pastor dennis roja and uh it's just awesome what is taking place pastor dennis is one of the most humble people that i have ever met he's so precious has just a small uh work and a very humble work it reminds me of, of of where jesus loves to hang out and he is at this church doing great things um pastor dennis uh was uh in in, in 1977 uh, he had his first visitation of Jesus. It was an absolute encounter where he could touch Jesus, hear him talk, feel him. Jesus came to see him. He had a crown on his head with every stone of the 12 tribes of, of uh, Israel. And that's significant because we're going to show you the visitation of the stones that have come to Pastor Dennis in this last year um, that confirm that vision that he had back in 1977. When Pastor Dennis received that uh, first vision that he had, it was after he had been saved and delivered out of a lifestyle of homosexuality. He was a, a transvestite, cross-dresser, and the Lord saved him. And after that visionary encounter of Jesus Christ, Jesus touched him on the head, and all the demons completely came out of him. He became so fired up for God, a fiery believer, uh, has worked as an evangelist for a number of years and even in this uh, past few years has been pastoring. But there's been a phenomenal outbreak of signs and wonders, including oil being poured out, uh, gemstones appearing. In fact, he has received over 1,200 gemstones, um, all, already different colors. Some of them are diamonds, some rubies, emeralds. Uh, there's uh, silver uh, and, and, and gold dust that's fallen and all different colors of dust, diamond dust and emeralds and sapphires and, and onyx stone. In fact, I've got onyx, um, little pieces of onyx stone right now, right on my hands here uh, because uh, we just dunked them into this whole barrel of oil that the Lord uh, gave uh, to Pastor Dennis in, in, in his church. It kept pouring out, pouring out. They collected it in a big barrel of oil. And in it is filled with little onyx stones, uh, which is one of the stones of the 12 tribes of Israel. And he was telling us that as people take the oil out to take samples of it, and it has this incredible fragrance to it, that it just keeps filling up. So ho ho however much goes out comes back in. 
uh, right now in the current church that he's in, that he has a Bible open on the podium, and oil just fills the pages of the Bible. It's filling the pages of the Bible, and uh, little gemstones, little rough-cut diamonds are falling out of the Bible onto the podium. And then, as he squeezes the Bible, the oil comes out, copious amounts of oil. This particular oil smells like myrrh. It's got the smell of myrrh on the inside of it, and it comes pouring off the podium into a uh, collection vessel that he has. And at the same time, these kind of um, manifestations are happening. In fact, he's got oil being poured down the walls of his church, off the beams, onto the floor, onto the seats, and it's just nonstop, continuous pouring out of oil. At the same time, these manifestations are taking place. Um, there's souls being saved. There's people being healed. Intense worship and prayer. Uh, deliverances. People are being set free. This is truly a move of God. And that's how you can confirm if a sign is really from God. It'll cause people to worship the Lord more, to seek Him more. The signs of salvation and healing and deliverance and all the things that represent the kingdom of God should accompany the signs and wonders if they're truly signs and wonders from Jesus Christ. It must bring our focus back onto Him that we'll get crazy in love with Jesus more and more and more. I tell you, I'm so excited about what the Lord is doing. When the oil started dripping soon after that, um, uh, Pastor Dennis came into his building one morning and all of a sudden the whole place was filled with gold dust that had fallen on the floor. And that's when he first noticed the prints. He was so excited. The Lord revealed to him that this was an angel that had visited and the prints that were on the floor, the footprints, were actually the footprints of that angel. They're about 16 to 20 inches long, I believe. And um, then uh, he had to go away the cleaning woman came in, cleaned up all the gold, vacuumed up the gold. And so when he came back, the prints were gone. He was so uh, concerned. But the Lord said, I'm going to visit you again. He visited again in that way. And on the carpet were the, the two footprints of the angel. Once again, this time, he cut out the carpet, cut out the footprints to keep them. And uh, we'll just show that to you on the screen. Um, and it's just covered in this in this gold dust with diamond dust, silver, uh, emerald, ruby, sapphire, all these different colors. It's just absolutely brilliant. I know that the actual footage I don't think does it justice, but when you're here, you can actually feel the presence of the Lord all throughout this room. And so it's really an amazing time. Uh, he was also at a, uh, a, a prayer meeting with five men praying and they were uh, praying, and as they prayed, the Lord visited with an audible voice. And with the audible voice, the Lord said that he was going to give Pastor Dennis a gift that he had given to no Jew. And Pastor Dennis said, well, why are you giving it to me then? Because I'm a Gentile. And the Lord revealed to him that he was going to give him uh, a, a, a supernatural token of the twelve uh, tribes of Israel, the gemstones that represent the twelve tribes of Israel and that he had an assignment for him to do in that way and so then the gemstones uh, uh, came just dropped over the next month they start over one month from May the 1st of 2007 to May the 31st he had all 12 stones with the amber one being the last one when you see them in, 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 in person they're just brilliant and causes a worship an adoration in your heart and awe of the presence of the Lord when you see them. Absolutely outstanding. 1,200 gemstones, over 1,200 gemstones have fallen. The 12 uh, special stones that were given to him uh, representing the 12 tribes of Israel that he is embracing in intercession before the Lord. And the Lord has a special assignment for him in the reaching of Israel, I believe. And uh, many other signs and wonders, such as the oil and the, the Bible dripping the oil and the walls dripping the oil. But all of it has released an acceleration of revival, an acceleration of souls, uh, and, and an acceleration of kingdom power. And this man, uh, Pastor Dennis, I believe was chosen because he is humble, because he is faithful, because he has integrity, because he is unselfish, and because he is wholly 
devoted to Jesus Christ. As you can imagine, he suffered a lot of persecution. People don't understand. They think he's of a cult or whatever. But I'll tell you, it's not a cult when people are getting saved and brought to the feet of Jesus and into his heart. It's not a cult when Jesus manifests his healing and deliverance power just like in the Bible. It's not a cult when the word of God is being exalted. It's not a cult when the name of Jesus is being so beautifully honored and where the fragrance of the nature and character of God is seen. It is the kingdom. Behold the kingdom of God, because it is at hand. Uh, Peter said, as he prophesied in Acts chapter 2, he said, In the last days, the Spirit of God would be poured out upon all flesh. And one of the things that would happen as a result of that outpouring is that there would be signs and wonders and harvest. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Were you blessed? The goal is to... It's not just to get you so obsessed with signs and wonders. The goal is to show you that there are realities beyond your current realm. By the grace of God, one of these days, we'll just come and we'll dedicate about an hour and we'll watch a few videos of the revivals that have happened before now. It's important to connect with the moves of God and the things that he has done in time past. Hallelujah. It's very, very important because before he comes, brothers and sisters, I tell you, there will be a mighty church that will arise. All of these spiritual mysteries, tonight's message is just a spiritual awakening. It's to awake us from the slumber and to tell us there is more in God. That we no longer begin to just put our terms of work with God to money and marriage and power and mundane things thank god for these things we just finished a financial series but let me tell you the truth god is looking for revivalists god is looking for mighty men and women that he will do great business with and i've made myself available god knows with my entire life you reign you ancient zion's king Kadosh, Kadosh, you are mighty on your throne. Oh, sing, oh, fountain of the deep, cry out, Kadosh, you are mighty on your throne. Break forth, oh, spirit of the deep. And we Kadosh, you are mighty on your throne. Oh, sing, oh, sing, oh, sing, you are mighty on your throne. Wait for the spirit of the deep. And we Kadosh, you are mighty on your throne. 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 Oh, sing, you ancient Zion's king. We cry out, Kadosh, you are mighty on your throne. Break forth, oh, fountains of the deep. Cry out, Kadosh, you are mighty on your throne. Lord, this is a cry from a generation that is desperate to see your power and your glory. We are tired of church and religion. We want to see the kingdom come. We want to see his power revealed. The reality of the Zoe life, the divine life. 
the incorruptible seed of the word of God we want to become epistles of power break forth oh spirit of the deep cry out Kadosh you are mighty on your throne oh see you ancient Zion king cry out Kadosh you are mighty on your throne. Break forth, O oh fountains of the deep. Cry out, Kadosh. You are mighty on your throne. Say, You are mighty on your throne. 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 We refuse to reduce your power. We step up the standard. Mighty on your throne. You are mighty on your throne. You are mighty on your throne. You are mighty.
am tired of faking it. I want the Zoe life. I have received the Son. Lord, let the life, let the realities in Christ be manifest. Let the realities in Christ be manifest. I'm tired of a powerless ministry. walk conscious from today if you have received the son I want you to know that there is a life in you crying for expression there is a divine life that can heal the sick there is a divine life that can cast out devils there is a divine life that can change hopeless situations there is a divine life that can bring God to the sea. Stop preaching powerless sermons. Stop teaching just theology without grace. Stop exciting the people of God with no results in their lives. your voice and pray one minute I am determined to be supernatural in every way in every way no the sons of God are not natural people they are supernatural in every way pray my hands are supernatural my words are supernatural lift your voice and pray My utterances are supernatural. They carry the life-giving power, the Sowell life. The power to heal, the power to alter the destinies of people, the power to transform their lives. You are mighty on your throne. You are mighty on your throne. You are mighty in my life. 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 Say, you are mighty in my life. 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 You 
for you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ that from today dead religion will die out of your life I pray for you that the substance of spiritual reality that which authenticates the manifestation of the soul life that which proves here and now that you are not natural that which proves that the earthly, the terrestrial has become celestial and heavenly. I pray in the name of Jesus that may that life begin to manifest through your life. That your hands will become instruments of revival and signs and wonders. That when men need God to show up, they will call on your attention because you will be the clearest representation of the divine life in your territory. I pray for you, may your words carry the power from heaven. May your words no longer be barren and powerless. May your words authenticate the fact that the spirit of life is at work in you. May they bring healing. May the words bring grace. May they bring life. Like the river in Ezekiel 47 that everywhere it flows let the fish that was dead come back to life let the souls that are dead come back to life i pray that from today your life and your ministry will no longer just be a ministration of death wasting the time of god's people may you step into an unusual dimension i'd like you to receive what i'm releasing upon you is a ministration of the spirit many of you will go back to your meetings from today and you will begin to see cripples walk you will begin to see the demonstration not just in talk 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 with no results there are many of you that will go back to your homes and the moment you step in there all of a sudden your territory begins to react because there's a way life not just that which is in christ alone that which has been manifest right here right now right here right now right here right now give us second corinthians chapter 2 holy spirit help me verse 11 there's a scripture that just came to my mind as i was talking Two. thank you lest satan should do what take advantage are you seeing that lest satan should do what take advantage of us he says for we are not ignorant of his methodology there is a system with which satan destroys people the first system is to study your vulnerability so he waited until jesus was hungry and he came through that angle of hunger are we together one of the many blessings of growing in the world is that you close every access point for Satan to be able to take advantage in your life. The area of the kingdom you are not furnished and established in will become the access point of darkness in your life. Are we together? He said, lest Satan should take advantage of us. We are Christians. But because of our inaccurate understanding of the systems of God, Satan can leverage on our ignorance satan can leverage on certain spiritual possibilities and buffet our lives write it down i've taught it again and again but i want to repeat it very quickly there are only three ways satan has access to people especially believers only three ways number one covenants covenants this is the system of transgenerational allegiance whether towards God or towards Satan. A covenant creates a platform for access. Regardless of the individual.
individual openness of the people. A territory can have a covenant with God to find expression at all times. When David was dedicating the temple, he stood up and said, Oh Lord, whoever faces this temple in Jerusalem and prays unto you, we pray it's a covenant that you hearken to them. So when Daniel was about to be destroyed, when they signed a law, the Bible says he opened his window towards Jerusalem, remembering the covenant. Are we together? And the Bible says he prayed. Covenants. They are fraternities that we come into, whether with God or with demon spirits, that authorize certain levels of activities in lives, in families, and in territories. Please pay attention. I'm building a conviction in us so that we'll pray. A covenant is so powerful because in a covenant your, your individual refusal or acceptance does not necessarily change things ordinarily. Are we together? I give you an instance. They did not consult with you to change fuel price because there is a covenant. By birth, you are a Nigerian. Are we together? So whatever happens to this country, as an individual, you can exempt yourself. But as a territory, we are under a common challenge. Are we together? When Jesus saw somebody who was born blind, his disciples asked a question. He said, who sinned that this man was born blind? He said, him or his father. In other words, there was something in the teaching of Jesus to them that had taught them that there can be things that transcend a generation. Are we together? And transcend a territory. Now, there are several people in a bid to bring balance to the exaggerated um, activities of demon spirits. We have deceived people into believing that covenants do not have anything. And so we have people jumping and saying, no way. But there are 11 people in a family. None of them is giving birth. Yet, they, are, they do not want to admit that there is something wrong. Covenants are powerful covenants are respected in the realm of the spirit there is a law that without the shedding of blood there is no remission of sins so the word had to become a lamb and go through that condition for mankind to be saved there are families born again but they do not understand the systems of god your personal salvation does not affect your territory. It takes an operation of the kingdom for that reality to be established. It is not negating what Christ has done. The confusion here usually has come from an accurate or an inaccurate understanding of the prophetic speakings of God and the experiential manifestation. Follow me please. When God speaks, he speaks from the realm of his possibilities and he's prophetic in his communications. He called things that be not as though they are. Are we together? But when it comes to the experiential manifestation of the same, there is a partnership from this earth realm to make it real. In the eyes of God, no one should go to hell. Is that true? Because the price has been paid. Are there still people dying and going to hell today? Yes. Does that mean the work of salvation is, 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 um, is a failure? No. The people have not opened up their will. There are many of us today by the grace of God who will be healed. But scripture was not just written this night. It's been written before our forefathers were born. However, tonight, there is a principle we are going to engage in that will make it become real. Are we together now? Yeah. Listen, sickness should give us an understanding that covenants are real. If you are a Christian and you are tongue-talking and you can still fall sick, that means you are a Christian and you can still be buffeted by demons. There is a spiritual logic to this. It is not insulting your salvation. It is to help you understand that there is, there, is, there is an understanding that will give you freedom. Please, I want you to pay attention to this. Many individuals, especially those who love God, are victims of fraternities. The goal of covenants is to create transgenerational allegiance, whether to God or to the devil. The missionaries came and brought the gospel of salvation but they did not bring the gospel of the kingdom so malaria killed them you call it malaria we know what killed them are we together because there are systems in the kingdom so you can be born again 
your eternal salvation can be secured but then because we do not understand the operations of the word, we can just pretend and say everything is all right. Faith is not foolishness. The end of faith is a manifestation. If you are trying, trying and nothing is happening, I think it's, it's, very, it's very humble to open up yourself and say, look, I see patterns. The clearest proof of an existence of covenants is patterns. Similarity of happenings regardless of the individuals. They rob your brother in a quai bomb. Your sister is minding herself in Benway. They rob her too. Two of them were not discussing it. Because you see, covenants give access to certain operations of, of spiritual beings. Whether God or Satan. I can enter a covenant of righteousness with my family that can grant God access. Even someone who is an unbeliever can come under the corporate covering of that covenant that's what brought people out of Egypt so long as there was blood whether the individuals believed or not for as long as they adore a representative of the people had blood the angel of death passed covenants I have seen this I saw it in my own life I saw it in my own family I've seen this in the life of pastors I've seen this in the life of sincere people Number two, ignorance. The second access point is a lest Satan should take an advantage of us. On the strength of our ignorance in this area, ignorance. Ignorance. Incomplete understanding of the principles of the word or no understanding completely. Both of them in the spirit is called ignorance. Whether you know the principle or you know part of it is still ignorance. Because you are only having, um, the Bible says you will arise and you will shine, Isaiah 60 verse 1. Not because you are tired of sitting, but it says your light is come. It's always been there. But the day it comes to you, it has the power to cause you to arise and shine. Ignorance. That's why we spent three weeks expounding on the mysteries of the kingdom. To help us understand the systems of God. Listen, the journey of a believer starts with Christ. It does not start with principles. It starts with an encounter of the person Christ. When you begin to study principles outside of an, the encounter of Christ, you will get into Scientology and witchcraft and mysticism and spiritism. You must encounter the object of your encounter is the person Jesus. Are we together? From that standpoint of encounter, he reveals himself to you. He brings you to a point of intimacy. And your reward for intimacy is power. And that power is divided into two. One, power that comes from the understanding of the systems of God. And another dimension of power that comes as a reward for intimacy. So there are two dimensions of the operations of God's power. Number one is the dimension of his power that is programmed into his laws. By believing those laws, the power is released. Whether you are praying or not. Seed time and harvest is an example of such laws. You engage it and the power of God is released. Are we together? Yeah. But there are certain dimensions of power that will only be released on the strength of intimacy. So it is from that standpoint of encounter, you begin to explore the systems of God. The systems of God defines his way of operation. And the moment you comprehend that, then you will truly access power. Ignorance. You can be born again and be ignorant. Number three, disobedience. The last access point of Satan is disobedient willful refusal to comply with God's principles willful refusal that's disobedience you're not doing it out of ignorance the Bible says having the readiness to judge all disobedience when your obedience is complete not when you start when it's complete Deuteronomy 28 from verse 1 and 2 says, And it shall come to pass 
right that if thou shalt diligently hearken to the voice of the lord to do and observe all that i command you this day it says that you shall be exalted above all nations and this blessing shall come upon you and overtake you then he begins to list them it shall come to pass if thou will diligently joshua verse 1 uh, chapter 1 verse 8 right the lord was speaking to joshua and then he says this book of the law shall not depart from out of your mouth he says but thou shalt meditate therein day and night that thou mayest observe to do all all not some observe to do right then he says then shall thou make thy ways prosperous and you shall have good success it's very important obedience 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 it's not just hearing what God has said. Obedience is doing what God has said. In John chapter 2, when the servants came to Mary, she said, whatsoever he tells you to do, he said, do it. Hallelujah. Paul the apostle was encouraging the, the early church and he said, now that ye know these things, in fact, it wasn't just Paul, I think it was Jesus himself. He says, now that ye know these things, happy are ye if you do them now that you know happy are you if you do them these brothers and sisters as mysterious as satan looks this is the only way he can find expression his possibilities are finite they are not infinite number one is covenant the strongest access point to satan or to, of satan into people's lives and then number two we have ignorance and number three disobedience and that's why we are gathered here tonight that God will grant us grace to take advantage of the provisions that have come in Christ and end this this buffeting of darkness over our lives and destinies and I pray that it will be someone's testimony tonight in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ I pray for you from the depth of my heart that as God begins to touch people he will touch you and end this captivity in your life once and for all is there anything too hard for me to do I am that I am is there anything too hard for me to do I am that I am listen I want you tonight to believe God do not come to God carelessly listen the Bible describes the kind of attitude we must have when we come to God Hebrews 11 verse 6 it says for without faith it is impossible to please him he said for he that cometh unto God must come believing must believe that he is that means he exists and then that he's the rewarder of them that diligently seek him so every time you approach God you don't come to try let me find out whether God can touch this cancer let me find out whether God can end my captivity no you come to him believing say I'm a believer so tonight I want you to approach the mighty God knowing that he's able to do all things believe me you have your requests you have your needs take your eyes away from that infirmity and believe in God it does not look it can be within the twinkling of an eye and God will change your story it doesn't take him time God is not a carpenter he doesn't build by nailing things he builds by speaking are we together now he called darkness light and it became light I really believe God and I came here tonight trusting that God will touch us it's going to be a very quick walk that's why I'm taking out the time to speak to us very quickly let me just take the altar call now look up please let that be the first miracle tonight let's take the altar call so that as we begin to move and just flow we'll just move in one single sweep there's a lot to do tonight and we want to save time so that we can finish on time 
I told you that there are three access points of Satan. One, covenants. Two, ignorance. Three, disobedience. Are we together? John chapter 3 from verse 16 says, For God so loved the world, He said that He gave His one and only begotten Son, who is no longer His one and only, but the first begotten of we, because He has called many of us into glory are we together then it says that whosoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life the thing i love about the faith life is that you are never forced to do anything your response in the kingdom is always a product of revelation and your willingness if you are willing and obedient then you will eat the good of the land there are people seated here right from praise and worship there are so many listening to me the first overflow and all the overflows around there are so many connecting uh, you know on our social media platforms and you're hearing my voice right now and the holy spirit is telling you the man of god is talking to you the first miracle that can happen to you tonight is the miracle of ending the mismanagement of your life by trying to run it your own way are we together that you hand over your life when you come to jesus you don't just come and accept him in your heart you take your heart and say lord i give you everything not i give you my spiritual life i hand over my entire life to you everything i've been through use it for your glory lord i offer my life to you everything that's true repentance that as you come here you are not just coming because you are feeling guilty you are coming here sincerely saying i'm tired of mismanaging my life there's got to be more than this. There's got to be more than living my life the way I want. I must come under authority. And I know there are so many people inside and outside hearing my voice. Some of you have never made this decision to make Jesus Lord of your life. You've made a decision to go to church. You've made a decision to join a religion called Christianity. But you have not made a true decision to surrender everything. And there are people, there's another category I'll call all by uh, at, at once so that we'll save time. There are those who at one point you truly made a genuine decision. But the cares of this life, the challenges in your life just overwhelmed you. And right now you know that as it is right now, as it is right now, you cannot say things are all right between you and God. You've backslidden, you've, you've turned away. But the Bible says, if my people who are called by my name, it says, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. Then it says, then we lie here from heaven and will forgive their sin and then will heal their land. Forgiveness will always follow healing. Are we together? I'm going to make an altar call right now any of the overflows outside inside here very fast i'll count one to ten listen there are people the holy ghost is speaking to and you know that you need to make your ways right with jesus you're saying lord things are happening in my family i do not even know the name of what is going in my family the first key is to surrender your all to sacrifice everything before his throne and say lord i'm not just coming to receive healing i'm coming to start a new life it's called zoe god's very life not another kind the very life of god hallelujah praise the lord before i make the altar call i want us to all close our eyes and pray in one minute intercede for those who are about to come and say lord no power will stop them from coming no power will stop them from coming we believe in the salvation of souls this is not a cinema where we are watching football this is a place where god is changing lives and destinies pray 
as you are praying for many of you the Lord is going to be speaking to you right now there are so many outside in all the overflows it's like you've been waiting for a man to call you and say return home he's calling you he's calling you hallelujah now I'm going to count 1 to 10 wherever you are please I'd like us to begin to celebrate them outside inside don't wait for others you are returning to Christ and you are making this decision for the first time leave your seat and make your way quickly one we we'll count one to ten don't wait for anybody God bless you they are coming two please clear the way for them outside don't let no friends stop you Jesus is calling you No, no, no. You are, doing, you are doing a very noble thing. Don't let any friend. Please encourage them outside. If you came with anyone, don't stop them from coming out. God will punish you if you stop anybody from coming out because he's your friend. It's, it's, it's an entirely, um, it's a personal affair. God bless you. Keep coming. Koinonia, a sacrifice of your applause to motivate them and encourage them. Jesus, Son of God, I believe in you. I believe in you. Keep coming. Jesus, Son of God, I believe in you. I believe in you hallelujah the Lord is still speaking to me that there are people you need to make your ways right with God in fact the Lord is showing me at least three ladies you've not prayed like for the last two months because you are asking what I have done will the Lord really really open up himself to me and the Lord is saying you should make your way to the front clear the way for them please clear the way I don't care whether you are a pastor you are a prophet make your way to the front this is serious business i believe there are still people outside in the overflows the first the second overflow and across the road please make your way to the front we are going to wait for you one more minute we are going to wait for you we are going to wait for you please don't play games with god tonight this is your destiny he wants to bless you he says for i know the thoughts that i think towards you said the lord jeremiah 29 11. he says thoughts of peace thoughts of good and not of evil to bring you a future and an expected end i believe in you i believe in you let's all sing this song one more time and then we'll pray for them jesus son of god i believe hallelujah i sincerely want to appreciate us young and old we're all here to receive jesus christ look at me please if i if i give you a new phone you don't accept it as though you are embarrassed you accept it with gratitude salvation is greater than any other thing you will be receiving tonight are we together and so i want you to be very proud of what you are doing whether you are being restored or you are giving your heart to Jesus for the first time. Just make sure you are not reciting a poem. Make sure this is from the depth of your heart. Are we together? Lift your right hand high to the heavens and say this after me. I'm just guiding you. But the most important thing is the sincerity of your heart. Say after me, Lord Jesus. I believe in you. I believe that Jesus is the son of God I believe that he died for me I believe that he rose again for my justification tonight I make Jesus my Savior my Lord I hand over my life 
and my destiny to your care and I ask that you be my Lord my God my King forever from today the hold of sin the hold of the flesh over my life comes to an end this is a new beginning in the name of Jesus keep your hands lifted as I pray for you father you see these hands lifted they have made genuine sincere commitments I pray that the Spirit of God that is our seal of redemption will be a witness to this spiritual transaction and I pray in the name of Jesus that from tonight let there be a new beginning in the name of Jesus Christ let there be a new beginning for every one of us no going back to the world no going back to the flesh by the power that raised Christ from the dead in the name of Jesus Christ I pray amen and amen a big congratulations to all of you this is the best decision you would have made in your entire life hallelujah now I like you to follow okay this way we're going to follow um, the ushers as they lead you there'll be a group of people to have your names your details and we'll follow you up they'll be very brief so that you come back and join us um, please be very fast with them because we're about to get up to the ministrations right away God bless you thank you for this great decision let's honor them koinonia bless them bless them Let's honor them as they go. Please rise up on your feet. We are going to pray for a few minutes. Hallelujah. We are about to pray for a few minutes. And I want our hearts to be open. Let's participate in the prayer. Hallelujah. Listen. When we pray, hear me, when we pray, we authorize heaven to step into our lives. Are we together? This is a miracle service and I want us to pray. Jeremiah 33 verse 3, please media help us. We're about to pray. We're about to pray. Jeremiah 33 verse 3. It says, call on to me and I will answer call on to me and I will answer it says and I will show you great and mighty things which thou knowest not call on to me you see prayer is a sign of humility because it's an indication that there is so much I do not know and there is so much I cannot do are we together prayer is a sign of humility when you call on God to step into your life, it is because you acknowledge that he is able. Lift your voice in one minute and say, Lord, I know you are able. Lift your voice. Come on, pray, pray, pray. We are praying, please. Open your mouth and pray. Lord, I believe you are able. That's why I'm here tonight. I believe you are able to heal that cancer, to heal that HIV. Lord, I believe that you are able to give me a new story. Harapako Soto I acknowledge you, I recognize you as the mighty God. You are the mighty God, the great I am. Hallelujah, hallelujah. You are the mighty God, the great I am. Hallelujah, hallelujah. You are the mighty God. The great I am, Hallelujah, Hallelujah. He is the 
mighty God, you are the great I am. Hallelujah, Hallelujah, you are the mighty God, the great I am. Hallelujah, Hallelujah. Self time in the name of Jesus. Shout it, say in the name of Jesus. Tonight, I declare that every force tying down my life, tying down my destiny, tying down my progress, you come under arrest tonight. Lift your voice and begin to pray. Shabakatalabakariala, balaraba. Oh, come on, Koinonia, are you praying? Every force Shabakatalaba Karia Daba Daba Mandeka Praska Barata Kareto Supa Shekete Pretekele Baba 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 Rakata Barato Soto Pregele Belebos Embrakata Lakate Seketaba Seke Praska Barata Labadash Oh, you come under arrest tonight. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He said, I set before you this day blessing and cursing, life and death. But he says, I advise you choose life so that you and your family will live. I'd like you to say, In the name of Jesus. I make a decision tonight I make a choice tonight that I must leave this place free I like you to open your mouth and mention the challenges that brought you here and say I am determined I make a decision I make a decision I make a decision. I make a decision. I make a decision. Are you praying? Shabara Katalaba. Mambra Katalakata. I make a decision. I make a decision. Please pray. Make sure you are praying. I make a decision. I must walk out of here healed tonight. I must walk out of here changed tonight. Hallelujah. Self time in the name of Jesus. Shout it in the name of Jesus. Every covenant orchestrated by darkness to keep me limited in life, to keep my family limited in life. Tonight, I declare that this is my night of victory. Lift your voice and cry, cry, cry. Cry unto the God of your salvation. They must be broken. They must be broken. I'm content. I'm content by faith. I can. I contend by faith. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
the bible says and abraham was old and well stricken in age and god had blessed him in all things i like you to pray and say every area that is not working say it every area in my life that is not producing results to now you come under the influence of the anointing lift your voice and begin to pray your finances may not be working your spiritual life may be working Oh, you are praying your to a new dimension of grace. Shaba karada Your majesty, your majesty, your majesty, your majesty, your majesty, your majesty. hallelujah hallelujah listen to the instruction the lord is giving me please listen let's walk together guys please let's walk together hallelujah praise the lord we are going to shout three times listen hallelujah because what i see in the realm of the spirit is like i'm standing on top of this building and i'm seeing like a pot boiling but it's about to tilt that's what i'm saying and the Lord is telling me that at the third shout, we are going to shout once, shout two. By the third shout, listen, the first thing that will happen, by the time we take that third shout, there will be such an explosion of the power of God, a mighty deliverance anointing. And that's how we are going to start off tonight. Are we together? It's called a healer. It's a mystery. It's a mystery that crumbles walls. When they went round the walls of Jericho, they shouted. The instrumentalists, everybody together. Hallelujah. Just be stupid enough to obey this instruction. And watch the God of wonders do mighty things in your life. You are shouting pain away. You are shouting sickness away. You are shouting captivity away. Hallelujah. My goodness, I'm telling you, the power of God is so strong in this place. Mighty, 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 mighty. I'm going to count three when I count three listen I want you to shout from the depth of your heart hallelujah and then the second time we are going to shout listen as surely as the God of heaven lives by the third shout in the name of the Lord God whose I am and who has sent me the wonders that will happen in your life by this third shout is a mystery brothers and sisters how God operates are you ready one two three I see hallelujah hallelujah please all those under the anointing just bring them out but really it's from the third time are you ready for number two we're shouting powers 
out of men's destinies were shouting thrones dominions that have tied down the lives of men are you ready one two three hallelujah now be sensitive oh i feel it on me here it comes that grace that unction that grace that unction by the third child hear me angels will begin to move in dramatic ways there will be an eruption of the power of god inside and outside are you ready i make a decree in the realm of the spirit and i pray according to the word of the lord as we make this shout i command thrones i command dominions i command altars and everything tying the destinies of men to give way in the name of the lord jesus are you ready now one two three mighty things happening to men already i tell you it's like volcano that's what i see in the spirit falling on people falling on people you baby. prophetic the mantle of the prophetic 21 people that's what i see 21 people right now oh god in the name of jesus wherever they are at the count of three let that mantle fall on them 21 one two three take it take it take it new wine take it Prophetic mantle. Prophetic mantle. Prophetic mantle. I call it forth. I call it forth. I call it forth. Mantles. Twenty one people. Stepping into prophetic anointings by the power of the Holy Ghost. By the power of the Holy Ghost, I activate it. I activate it. I activate it. I stand under this apostolic anointing. I activate it. the spirit 
so many people having their hands tied with chains that's what i'm seeing in the realm of the spirit chains this is a spirit of limitation lift your hands everyone i want to take authority over this spirit wherever you are inside and outside i like you to get ready if you are in this category something will happen to you let the sword of the spirit part those chains open are you ready i command the chains be broken now be broken now be broken now be broken now now there's a family God is liberating a whole family they are here I'm seeing God touch them right now giving them miracles hallelujah lift your voice in one minute and say Lord speak to me speak to me send a word that will bring me hope Send a word. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I'm hearing the name Memuna. We have to rush. I'm hearing the name Memuna. Is there someone with that name here? Memuna. That's what I'm hearing. Shabakoto Paratoya. Memuna. Outside. Who is that? Memuna, you are outside. Who is that? Come. Look at me. Where are you coming from? Huh? I'm looking at you. Listen, look at me. You just came from somewhere here. Huh? Is there a, a mic? I'm looking at you and I'm seeing you enter transport and you are coming from Abuja to come here. Where did you come from? From Abuja. From Abuja. That's where you are coming. Because I look in the realm of the spirit and I'm seeing you in a car and you came and I'm seeing you praying and asking God to visit you and visit your family is that why you are here yes. your family you were saying if only you come here God will visit your family and God is saying he's bringing a breakthrough to Memuna and her family in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ I break that curse over your family by the power of the Holy Ghost it lives forever lift your hands and give Jesus praise lift your hands and give Jesus praise Lift your hands and give Jesus praise. Look at me. Please call the lady again. My dear, where is your mother? Uh, huh? What's she doing? She's at home. Huh? She's a civil servant. She's a civil servant. We have to pray because the devil wants to put sickness. She's complaining of pains in her body. She went to the hospital. Huh? She may not have told you. She went to the hospital last week and they said she should be careful because she's having problems with her back yes. is that true yes. that's what the doctor said that she's having problems with her back yes. this is witchcraft it's not just pain like that your mother cannot even watch for 10 minutes her yes. back will start paining yes. her yes. in the name of jesus christ we pray for mama right now wherever she is let there be a supernatural miracle for her in the name of the lord jesus christ in the name of the lord jesus christ madam can i talk to you please yes that madam that one with um yes please make sure you are praying god is touching people we just want to be fast i wish we had time no 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 you don't have to kneel down please stand up where are you coming from madam from jigawa jigawa state jigawa state yes I'm looking at you and in the realm of the spirit I'm seeing a woman who has gone through pain and she's crying and I'm wondering why are you going through all of this uh, some of them I may not be able to say it here but you were invited here I'm with my sister 
That's what I'm saying. Where is she? I'm seeing two people. Where is the sister? Come. Come and stand. Hold on. I'm hearing the Lord speak to me and saying there are two other people. Yes. There are two other people again yes. that you came with aside from you. Where are they? they, are, they are. Where are they? Two other people. Where are they? Please come and stand. I want to announce to you, all of you, that God will give you a testimony tonight that will surprise you. Please, I want you to believe. I want you to believe me. The things I see, I may not be able to tell you right now. Because um, one of you has a problem with your husband. I don't want to go into... Hold on. I, should I talk? Do you want me to talk? Calm down. Let me talk to you. You cannot. Let me talk. Madam, please look at me. Your husband needs deliverance. You believe what I'm saying? You love God. You are a sincere woman. But your husband needs deliverance. Huh? Where is he? I'm looking at you and I'm seeing a woman crying. A man coming to vomit. Huh? Like I'm a vomit from drunkenness. And then this thing is telling on you. Huh? Are you a Christian? You love the Lord. I'm seeing you praying for this woman. Yes. Huh? Yes. That's yes, why I asked her, how do I know you are wearing something? I'm seeing you praying for her. Yes, In fact, sir. even when you stood there, you are saying that God should locate this woman yes, and sir. bless her. Yes, I'm hearing sir. your prayers. The Lord is ministering it to me and he's saying you should bless her. And the Lord God of heaven is saying he's going to bless her and bless you too. Hold on. Let me talk to you. Will you believe what I tell you? Why am I seeing you in a wedding gown? Are you married? Yes, sir. I'm seeing you in a wedding gown. Listen to me very carefully. And I'm seeing two men standing. Hold on. I'm seeing one man and I'm seeing another man. Yes, and the man is saying he married before this one. Yes. He comes to you in a dream. Yes, is that sir. true? Yes, sir. This man I'm talking about. Yes, sir. Tell me the truth. Now don't be embarrassed. Yes, this has affected your marriage. Stand up. It's time to deliver you. Because I'm seeing you get married and I'm seeing two men. Your real husband and another one in the realm of the spirit. He comes to you in a dream. But the Lord is saying I should set you free. Elohim, you reign. You reign. You reign. is showing me a lady you left the hospital this morning your mother is in the hospital it's part of the reasons why you came here please who is that your mother you left her in the hospital and you came here please when you get that person let me pray for her because God wants to do a miracle I want to pray for you the Bible says what God has joined let no man put asunder God did not join you on any spirit entity and he's going to deliver you in the name of Jesus be free let her go now in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ I speak to you by the power of the Holy Spirit madam please look at me your husband needs deliverance his own money finishes on friend and friends and beer is that true is that true, it's true. because I'm seeing him not only drink but buying for his friends and they finish the entire money you are a very kind woman but the truth is he's not giving you even one naira you don't even get money from him but the lord is going to be changing things now let me tell you how it will change it will look as if it's getting worse but you watch and see what god is going to be doing you believe that yes i'm going to pray for you father in the name of jesus christ let there be a miracle a supernatural miracle a supernatural miracle a supernatural miracle there is a woman from Katsina. There is a woman from Katsina. A woman from Katsina. 
that's what I'm seeing a woman you are outside you didn't cover your hair you are from Katsina where is that person is there someone like that please where is that person why are you clapping where's the person please come from Katsina look at me stand up stand up madam stand up your time of breakthrough has come look at me the Lord is saying I should quote a scripture for you when the Lord again shall turn your captivity he says you'll be like them that day madam you have cried enough in this miracle service the God of heaven is about to wipe your tears Mary Mary who is Mary 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 I know there are many Marys hold on please hold on let me call the Mary the Mary is in this row Mary you are seated here no 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 at the back you are wearing a dark cloth right here you didn't cover your head the Mary is in not like I don't know if it's a dark cloth like it has flower it's a gown it's a gown straight down gown not gown with skirt is there someone like that Mary this row the angel of the Lord is said a gown or someone I'm seeing something with flower is there someone like that please find out Mary I need to talk to that person I need to talk to that person you're the one okay well come I'll talk to you madam where are you from I'm from Akwaibo you are from Akwaibo I stayed in Katsina I know are you married yes where is your husband it's in Katsina I have to pray for you God wants to give you breakthrough my goodness lift your hands I'm telling you I just saw like a wind and the Lord said they are angels watch what happens in the congregation right now angels 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 bringing impartation to people I just saw like a wind in the spirit angels cutting away things that's what I'm seeing angels cutting away things from people they are removing things in people's bodies that's what I see like a slimy substance leaving people this is breakthrough breakthrough God is giving people breakthrough hallelujah ma let me pray for you what do you do ma hallelujah hold on I'm looking at this woman don't be afraid correct me if I'm wrong I'm looking at you where is Kasham? I'm looking at you, Ma, and I'm seeing her name on your head. And I was wondering, and the Lord, no, 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 hold on, come, come. I'm looking at this woman and, and I'm seeing the name of this lady, Kasham, on her head. And I thought your name is Kasham, but the Lord told me it's not Kasham. The, what she's practicing is what you are now. What, what are you doing? I'm a nurse. What are you doing? I'm a nurse. You're a nurse. That's what I'm seeing in the spirit. That's what God is telling me. Because I'm looking at you and I saw her name written on your head. And the Lord said I should call her and make... See, this is not diabolic. Hosea chapter 12. It says, I have spoken to you by the prophet. I have multiplied visions. He said, I have spoken to you in similitudes. This is not jamboree. We have a lot of things to do. God is locating people and when he's doing it for one, he's doing it for many people. Time will not allow for everybody to be called, but I just want you to believe believe in what God is doing in the name of Jesus Christ that's that's the that's the only reason why you are here ma I want to pray for you because I'm seeing the Lord promoting you and lifting you you believe that if God grants grace you will return and testify hold my hands ma in the name of Jesus Christ may the God of heaven promote you and lift you right now in the name of Jesus ma I want to pray for you where are you from please I'm from Anambra but I'm from Jigawa I want to pray for you what do you do nurse. I'm a nurse you are a nurse too yes. I want to pray for you the devil wants to put sickness in your body and this is not a nice this is not something I will even say the devil wants to put it in your body but will take authority over it right now please hold my hands man in the name of Jesus Lord he will fortify her I, I command that spirit to leave you right now out the devil wants to put sickness in the 
name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Ma, look at me. The pain is living and you are going free. You have cried. I have, I'm seeing a woman who has cried. But God is stepping in. Hold my hands. In the name of Jesus. Lord, the grace that makes things happen. May that grace bring this woman out of pain. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I want to pray for you. Come, stand here. I want to pray. There's bad luck in your family. Huh? Serious bad luck. Where's your father? Quara State. Quara State. I'm seeing a man in Quara State just going around in circles, not even doing anything meaningful. We have to pray. It's one thing to move physically, but it's another thing for your life to move too. Huh? And I'm going to pray for you. You love Jesus. Please be very serious with the Lord. Hold my hands. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ. Emeka. Emeka. I'm hearing the name of someone. Emeka. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Let there be a miracle for you. Let there be a miracle for you. In the name of Jesus. Emeka. The Lord is ministering to me. I'm hearing the name of someone. Emeka. The Lord is giving you a testimony in the name of Jesus Christ. Emeka, you are outside. I'm seeing two Emeka coming. I'm telling you, I see like a screen. One, you have beard. One, you are wearing white. Hello, King. You reign. You reign. You reign. Hello. I'm seeing the spirit of death on you. Don't be, I'm not a prophet of doom, but I'm seeing the spirit of death on you. The devil wants to destroy your life. We have to pray for you. Sir, look at me. What do you do? You are a student. I'm going to pray for you. You love Jesus and the hand of God is upon your life. Huh? It's not just an ambition for business, but the anointing of God is in your life. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Sir, I need to pray for you. I need to pray for you and destroy something that wants to kill you. Huh? So it's just a simple prayer. I'll pray for you. Don't be afraid. I'm not, I'm, we're not prophesying doom. You get what I'm saying? In the name of Jesus Christ, I command that thing to leave you. In the name of Jesus Christ, that devil of darkness, it leaves you right now. Sir, hold my hands. I pray that the anointing of the Spirit will come upon your life right now. Step into a new level of grace by the power of the Holy Ghost. It's not by power, it's not by might. I bring an anointing to your life that takes you to a new dimension. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. There is a lady who is going to shout under the anointing. Just carry her like that and bring her to me. There is a word. No, it's inside here, it's not outside. Right here, carry her like that and bring her. It's a message. Just carry her like that and bring her. this is what i see in the realm of the spirit as she's lying down like this that's what i'm seeing in the realm of the spirit and i'm hearing ezekiel 2 verse 2 it says and the spirit entered me and set me upon my feet the lord is bringing not just deliverance to you and your family but the lord is bringing i'm hearing the word restoration and the lord is saying i should prophesy to you receive it in the name of jesus it comes upon you by the power of the holy spirit please bring this lady for me just just carry her carefully if she can please lift your voice and pray and say lord visit me in the name of the lord jesus christ I break every hole you have with her life in the name of Jesus I'm looking at a lady in the realm of the spirit and I'm seeing a spirit wearing a crown and the Lord is saying he's removing that crown that's what I'm seeing in the realm of the spirit this is a lady who loves God but I see her connected to things that have to do with marine powers and I'm seeing the lady with a crown and the Lord is taking it in the name of Jesus Christ I command freedom right now by the power of the Holy Spirit. 
I command freedom right now. Be free. Go. Let her go now. By the blood of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Please lift your hands. I want to pray. Before we pray for the sick, there's something the Lord is showing me. Please, I'd like you to lift your hands. Just do what I'm asking you to do. Lift your hands. The power of God is going to come on certain people. I'm seeing deliverance in families. This is not just you. You are standing for your loved ones. I'm seeing mighty deliverances happening in families. And the Lord is saying, one more time, we should shout that name, Jesus. In the name of the Lord Jesus. As we shout Jesus, I'd like you to shout all your heart. At the count of three. The moment you do that, I see deliverance coming to families. And what they could not do in many years will be done within one month. What they could not do in many years will be done within one month. In the name of Jesus. One, two, three. Right now. Deliverance. 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 Shakataba. Families. I command it inside and outside. Inside and outside. Deliverance. What could not be done in 10 years? In 10 years, it will be done in one month. What could not be done in 10 years will be done in one month. What could not be done in 10 years will be done in one month. Hallelujah. Say after me in the name of Jesus. Say it in the name of Jesus. Every door stopping me from entering the next level. Right now, I command that door broken. Lift your voice and begin to pray. Pray yourself to the next dimension. Doors are opening. Pray inside and outside. Doors are opening. Doors are opening. Doors are opening. Hallelujah. 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 Listen, many of you may not understand what is happening in the realm of the spirit, but you see, the presence of God is where change happens in the life of men. Just like this, you will walk out and you will see things happen in your life. Just like this. There are chains that tie men. There are chains that hold down destinies. There are chains. Please bring this lady for me. Yes, this lady. Just this very lady. Just bring her. I keep the chains falling. Hey, I keep the chains. I keep the chains. I keep the chains. I keep the chains. I hear the chains, I hear the chains There is power in the name of Jesus Deliverance is coming for you There is power in the name of Jesus There is power Hallelujah. Uh, Jimmy, the Lord is giving me a word. I saw an eagle flying, and the eagle came and entered you. And the Lord is saying, I should tell you, He's restoring to you the spirit of prophecy. That's what the Lord is saying, I should tell you. He's restoring to you. 
I saw an eagle fly and it entered you. And the Lord is saying he's restoring the spirit of prophecy. 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 Hallelujah. I'm looking in the spirit and I'm seeing people carry load and God is saying I should bring down that load. Lift your hands. Lord, where are they carrying loads that do not belong to them? Right now, at the count of three, let that load come off you. Right now, one, two, three. Right now, right now, right now. Anyone carrying any load. Kapra takata, shakatata. Every load, every load, every load, every load, every load. Every load that is not of God. Every load that is not of God. Every load that is not of God must leave you. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Before we are going to be very fast. Hallelujah. I was walking and the Lord said I should go back. Praise the Lord. Please don't mind me. Just allow me to do what the Lord is saying. And the Lord is saying I should walk right here. Outside. Right and go outside. Please hear me. And the Lord is saying as I walk. For every road that I pass. If there is a spirit holding your destiny. It must leave you. Please believe me. Sheka karababa. I lift my hands right now right now as i'm passing the anointing of the spirit is touching people destroying yokes destroying yokes destroying yokes right now destroying yokes from my left and my right destroying yokes any spirit tying down any man's destiny right now 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 right now, right now. Right now. Right now. Every spirit. Every spirit. Every spirit. Every spirit. Now listen to me. Those outside. Don't be afraid. It will not rain. But watch this. Lift your hands. I'm going to walk this way. And the power of the Holy Ghost. You are enduring this rain as I walk through. Any spirit tie your life must give way right now. Are you ready? Right now. Right now. Right now. Right now. Right now. I release everybody from bondage. 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 Right now. I stretch my hands. I stretch my hands. I stretch my hands. Right now. I stretch my hands. I stand by an anointing as I pass your road. Any devil tie you. We let you go right now. As I pass your road, 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 as I pass your road. now, right? for your limitation you are enduring the rain you cannot go back the same I came out to join you hallelujah please make sure you pray I'm moving around we are going to pray for you. Please lift your hands. Make sure you are praying. There's no spirit that will stand. Hallelujah. As many who can come in, don't worry. Just push them in. I know it will be a bit stuffy, but push as many people. 
everywhere and let's pray we have to hurry up just push them as many there are some who may not be able to do much but then we are praying we are praying say after me in the name of Jesus say it again in the name of Jesus every power holding me say it again in the name of Jesus every power holding my breakthrough tonight your time is up go 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 lift your voice and pray pray every power every force hallelujah now hold on I know that there are so many people coming in just give them room to come in just make every adjustment not all may be able to come in but it's a sacrifice it's a sacrifice it's a sacrifice we want to pray for the sick now now please be careful so we don't have people marching on people hallelujah we are going to do two things at the same time all those who came trusting God for healing now is your time please walk with the protocol walk with the ushers I'm going to ask you to come out and stand here don't match the people in front while they are doing that ushers begin to pass your prayer request begin to pass your prayer request there are miracles in the name of Jesus there are breakthroughs in the name of Jesus there is healing in the name of Jesus to break every chain break every chain Break every chain. Power to break every chain. Break every chain. I sense a strong healing anointing. A strong healing anointing entering this building. Break every chain. 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 hallelujah now we're going to minister to the sick please hear me no matter what the situation is as you stand right here I want you to believe God for healing you've heard the testimonies of people you've seen the things that God is doing in this place don't make the place rowdy just be orderly as we pray for you just a touch and you return back we may not have the time to take testimonies hallelujah please say to me you will join me where's pastor jakes i'm glad to have them around and they'll make this work easy the anointed people as we pray for you i want you to believe god for healing the moment you are prayed for as you walk back to your seat do what you couldn't do before don't just sit down and hope you are healed the bible says they came to hear and to be healed they came to hear and to be healed everyone lift your hands in one minute and pray and say every sickness in my body is time for you to go every incurable disease go ahead and pray every incurable disease you are living hallelujah worship team you help us while we minister pastor jakes me please we are going to pray for you in the name of the Lord Jesus I want you to believe in the God that heals in the name of Jesus thank you Heavenly Father make sure you are praying in tongues don't just be whiling away time drop your prayer request and be praying pray in the spirit and say Lord you are going to visit me
So that you don't go back and return the same. Hallelujah. Before I pray, I, I want, if you can rise, please rise. Those on, under the anointing, that's all right. And then mothers with children, that's all right. But the rest of us, please, let's rise and take this very seriously. We're going to be praying right now. When Pastor Jakes and Ejimi are done, they can come and join us. We'll pray. Pastor Godwin, where are you? Please, can you come and join us? Um, we're going to pray. I'd like you to stretch your hands here and in one minute, pray like your life depends on it and say, the same way I have dropped this, that's how I've dropped every challenge in my life. I'd like you to pray. Please pray. Koinonia, open your mouth. Inside, outside, online, please join us. We're going to lay our hands prophetically on this request. As we lay our hands on them, we are releasing the power of God to every home, to every territory in the name of the Lord Jesus. Make sure you pray from the depth of your heart. Father, we agree with you. We agree with you. All kinds of miracles, impossible situations. Make sure you are praying. There is a God that answers prayers. Let fire fall on this request to God. Shakata prakata kata kata rekata kata 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 bosh. Mabra kata prosa tapos. Ela kata prakata pele koto so prata kata bala daba. Mata shata taka taka rada bala daba. Pray, prophesy. We are speaking over this request. Wipe the tears of people, oh God. Visit individuals, visit families. Strange miracles. Strange miracles. Shall not arise again the second time. 
lift your hands and receive the prophecy. This is where God is going to be changing lives. Hallelujah. Your destiny can change overnight because one word was received. Prophecy does not only reveal, it creates. This is where everybody gets to participate in the service. Take it high, guys. Inside, outside. This is where I want you to believe. You will rise in his name. I don't know. You reign in You will rise in your name. ago I had a very serious encounter with God and the Lord told me something he said I have put my word in your mouth as you speak it I will make it happen that's what the Lord told me please I want you to believe it oh blessed is she that believes don't sit down and doubt and waste your time there is a spiritual dimension to life it's not just I have taught you principles Believe me when I tell you there is a spiritual dimension. Gates and doors over the lives and the destinies of men. I pray. Every gate that must be opened right now I speak to you Fata, be open now. 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 That chain. Dying any man's destiny, dying the speed of your progress. You are moving, but you're not making impact. Right now, I release upon you an auction for speed. An auction, take it. An auction for speed. An auction for speed. The Bible says, and the hand of the Lord, please help them. The hand of the Lord came upon Elijah. He gathered his loins and ran on barefoot. He overtook the chariots of Ahab down to Israel. I don't know what you have done from January to now, but I prophesy from now till the end of June, do what you have not done in five years. Shake it, 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 it. Do what you have not done in five years. Do what you have not done in five years. Hallelujah. Jacob dug a well and they covered it. They dug another one. They covered it. They dug the third one and they left it and they called it Rehoboth. They said God has given us our space where you have been begging for relevance it's like there is no place for you in life it's like there is no place I stand under this apostolic and prophetic mantle take your place in life 
Take your place in destiny. Take your place in ministry. Take your place in destiny. Take your place in ministry. Ayayayaya. Ay, 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 ay. Whatever has covered your glory, whatever has covered your glory, I stand tonight. I invoke the powers of the heavens and I command, let your glory be released now. Be released now. Be released now. Anyone here called jobless? between now and the next two months I don't care what is the reason but I pray as surely as the God of heaven lives we give you a job here now we give you a job here now we give you a job here now it says to appoint unto them that morning Zion listen there are some of us, you are making progress, but no help in your life. You fight for everything by yourself. You pay for everything by yourself. When you are in trouble, there's nobody to speak for you at the gates. Where are your helpers? Who stopped them from entering your life? Who said it must be this hard? I go down on my knees. I call your helpers by prophecy in the name of Jesus from the north to the south to the east to the west from the north to the south to the east to the west from the north to the south to the east to the west receive of their ministry listen let me tell you there is nothing more tragic as having no helper no man can stand alone you need voices to speak to you at the gates of destiny. You need men to endorse you and say, help him. You can't have to explain yourself to everybody. Who is speaking for you? I pray again. Whoever must appear in your life from now till June, business helpers, financial helpers, marital helpers, Maria, help us. I call you forth. I call you forth. Hallelujah. Listen, lift your hands. There are some of you, your dreams and visions used to be opportunities for intense revelation where God will show you secrets. It made your life easy till something shot you from visions and dreams. I pray every dead dream life every dead manifestation of visions like a mantle receive restoration now restoration of dreams prophetic dreams visions prophetic vision hallelujah Please stretch your hands towards me please stretch your hands towards me the hands of a man represent your responsibility represents your wisdom represents your agency for bread I pray for you whatever has mocked the creativity of your hands so that your potentials are underutilized Isaiah 48 verse 17 I am the Lord that teaches thy hands to profit I pray the grace that makes your hand productive. Take it now. Take it now. Take it now. Take it now. The grace that makes your hand multiply. Take it now. Everything called barren in your destiny physical barrenness spiritual barrenness academic barrenness career barrenness right now 
I cause the spirit of barrenness from his root and I command be fruitful be fruitful be fruitful hallelujah lift your hands in the next one minute I want us to pray because everyone will receive something listen listen what we are all receiving is an upgrade of grace listen he said grace be multiplied grace and peace be multiplied the grace upon a man's life can multiply should multiply must multiply there are three things that happen to you when God lifts you one he multiplies your grace two he adds to your responsibility three he increases your territory of influence both spiritually and physically I pray for you lift your hands some of us you have not backslidden but you've not risen beyond certain levels you have stayed there at a level everything that is alive grows please I want you to receive I told you this meeting will have impartations the impartation is not falling on the ground and rolling impartation is receiving something tangible in your spirit hallelujah Paul said I long to see you that I may impart unto you some spiritual gift he said to the end that he be established I pray for you lift your hands every grace that is dormant in your life every grace that is useful but it has stayed at a level and is made no matter how you try to rise it stands there in the name of Jesus by the privilege of the apostolic office I pray for you may that grace be upgraded now shake it receive it receive it take it an upgrade of favor an upgrade of wisdom an upgrade of power fire power fire fire prayer fire what fire prayer fire what fire an upgrade of supernatural wisdom an upgrade of access access to men of influence I pray for you listen what your current level of grace could not bring you into I empower you to go back and conquer that realm oh let me repeat what I'm saying there are levels in life and there are graces that are like keys you can get to a level and be stuck there no matter what kind of deliverance you can stay there because graces are like flights they can take you beyond certain levels some of us just need a little upgrade to overcome the obstacles you have tried prayer has brought you so far I pray for you whatever dimension must be added so that you can fly like the eagle that you are receive that dimension now receive that dimension now receive that dimension now hallelujah the bible says and you shall be called with a new name which the mouth of the lord shall speak it says you shall be called hefziba and pula a well desired land i pray for you everything that makes people run away from you they plan to help you but when they come they change their mind they plan to bless you but when they see you they consider what they are about to sow there is a spirit that cut short breakthroughs I pray for you in the name of Jesus I pray the blessing that was prophesied he said to Jacob the smell of my son is like the field that the Lord has blessed that aura that attracts favor receive it right now receive it right now whoever has said over his dead body for you to rise may that prayer be answered 
let me say it again whoever vowed and said it is through his dead body you will rise I said may that prayer be answered listen the Bible says in five things the Lord will deliver you he said yes six he will deliver you from the scourging tongues of men it was a revelation that was given Job that men stay and use their tongues to trap the destinies of men I pray for you whoever has used his tongue like a net to trap your life I release you right now I release you right now I release you right now hallelujah the kind of finances your hands has not touched I pray for you between now and the end of this month may God do something that must bring tears from your eyes may God do something that must bring tears from your eyes may God do something that must bring tears from your eyes anyone here marked for death that death is eyeing you waiting for the day you will get on the road waiting for the day a bike will come close to you to kill you and take your life i pray for you in the name of jesus we forbid the earth from receiving your body we forbid the earth from receiving your body there are five elements i'm rounding up that are the conduits through which the supernatural finds expression on earth five elements all through scripture the supernatural cannot manifest on earth without the instrumentality of these five elements number one is light god is light the entrance of thy word give it light let there be light number two water the fish and the birds of the air in genesis came out of water water represents abundance number three fire hallelujah it's a mysterious instrument not threatened by any other element yet refines every other number four wind the mystery of sound the mystery that takes sounds and realities he said i prophesied as i was commanded and there was a sound that sound came back in acts chapter 2 a sound hallelujah and the last element is the earth the prophet said "O oh earth hear ye the word of the lord he said for from dust thou art and to dust thou shalt return hear me i want to pray just one deep mystery for you the earth is a universal point of contact every man makes contact with it for you to be alive you must make contact with the earth your feet must touch the ground your helper's feet is touching this ground you are touching no, 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 it's not amen. It's a mystery. The office where you are to be employed is on this ground. It's not in the air. Hear me, please. The bank that holds the favor you are looking for has contact with this earth. And the prophet said, O oh, earth, you are a living thing. You are not just stones. Hallelujah. Are we together? Hmm. It says they will not be able to oppress you because you have made a covenant with the stones. I pray for you whoever wants to disfavor you just like the stars fought for Deborah may the earth fight for you may the earth fight for you quarter to shame may a mystery manifest that you don't understand to bail you out listen when men say let's see what will become of him i pray a mystery my goodness another way may god bring another mystery and deliver you in the name of jesus the heat and the turmoil in nigeria we love our nation we pray for them and we pray sincerely out of a sense of nationhood but i pray for you the mystery of exemption that can exempt a man it says for when men say there is a casting down for you you will say there is a lifting up i prophesy a lifting up 
regardless of the recession this is still your year of multiplied grace and growth hallelujah lift your hands and give God thanks thank him sincerely Lord we thank you for your word listen I want you to go back realizing what happened to you don't be like the man who looks at himself at the mirror and leaves and forgets these prophecies have come upon you like a mantle you hello scriptures exhort us from the book of proverbs it says my son attend to my sins incline thy ears to my words let them not depart from thy eyes and keep them in the midst of thee. As you have listened to this message, we believe that you are going to reap the blessings thereof if you attend to these words as well. That you will keep these words in the midst of your heart. That no matter the circumstance, your eyes are going to be fixed on these words. And as you have been blessed, we will tell you to share this message. Be an evangelist by sharing to others to be blessed and then subscribe to this channel for us because we have loads of videos we have loads of content that is going to make you blessed that is going to set you on course that is going to set you ablaze and don't forget to like for us thank you